Every title down, Jesus, and we worship you. Oh, we lay our crowns and worship you. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, glorious God. church tonight just go ahead and give him praise just in a moment just speak to the Lord just magnify his name just glorify him let him know how much you love him the song says be lifted high Lord we enthrone you Lord we enthrone you you are enthroned on the praises of your people Lord we give you praise you are enthroned in our heart you are enthroned in all our activities we just want to honor you can you just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord in a moment just go ahead and say something nice the King of Kings is here. His presence is here. He's mighty in our midst. I want you to just go ahead and honor and recognize the presence of the King of Kings. Go ahead, honor and recognize the presence of the Lord of all. He is King in the heavens and He rules in the affairs of men. Go ahead and give Him praise all over this building. The service has started. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let Him hear how much you love Him. Let Him hear how much you adore Him. Let Him hear how much you honor Him. Go ahead, make it praise known to Him. Let Him know how, mad, how mighty He is to you. Let him know how much you value him. Oh Lord, we give you praise. We honor and bless your name. We thank you for your mighty presence in our midst. We thank you because you are here. You are here to bless us. You are here to meet with your people. The world says where two or three are gathered, there you are in their midst. Lord, we just honor you. We thank you for honoring us with your presence. We thank you for honoring us with your power. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We give you adoration. Come on, if somebody is excited. If you are excited to be in the presence of our King, if you are excited to be in the presence of our Maker, can you lift up your voice and give a shout of praise to the King of Kings and to the Lord of all. Come on, make it louder. Make it louder, make it louder. Let the Lord hear your shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, can we be on our feet in a moment? Hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor on your left and on your right and make your neighbor welcome? Tell your neighbor you are welcome to Koinonia. Tell your neighbor you are welcome to the presence of the Lord. You are welcome to the presence of your maker. You are welcome to the presence of the King of Kings. You are welcome to the presence of the Almighty. Come on, if the people of the Lord are excited to be in the presence of their Lord maker, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. There's always joy to be in the presence of God. And while we remain standing for a few minutes, I'd just like to give a few announcements. 
We know that the Lord has been good to us and the testimonies that are bound are numerous. And if you would like to share your testimony to the glory of God and to encourage the saints of God, we want to encourage you to walk to the back of this auditorium and meet the public relations officials together with the media personnel and they will receive your testimony and give you an opportunity to share of the goodness of God in your life. Amen. Also, the public relations department are there for any inquiries you like to make. There are things you're not clear of. There's something you're looking for. There's an announcement you want to get clear. You can meet the public relations officials and they will be very glad to clarify you. We have a robust security outfit here. However, we want to encourage everyone to please be mindful of your personal belongings. The things you came with, your phones, your bag. Please make sure you can always see them at every point in the service. And if you called out for an altar call, please, especially for, um, to give your life to Christ, we encourage you to pick up your bags and everything you came to church with alongside with you. Amen. The use of mobile phones to snap and video during the course of the service is not allowed. You can catch up with your friends. You can do that after the service. Amen. We also have a medical team stationed just outside that door. And uh, any usher or protocol can guide you to it. If there's any medical emergency, we would like you to just use them. And it's also free in case you just want to do a test, you just want to check something. They are very robust. They are very well equipped. Amen. And there are also restrooms on all floors of this auditorium and also at the overflow outside. You want to make use of anyone, you can just meet the ushers and they will gladly direct you to one. Amen. Please do not litter the environment. You want to dispose of your trash. There are beans outside everywhere in the auditorium. Please do well to make use of it. Amen. How many of us were blessed last week? Ask your neighbor, what was the title of last week's message? Hallelujah. God is coming to us again mightily. God is coming to us again mightily. And it's not good for you to receive these blessings alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please do well to get the link. There are six ways you can connect with us. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which is um, X, MixLR, and Trades. Do well to share the link with a friend and tell your neighbor to connect. God is at the business of blessing us. God is out to reach out to us. God is out to bless us and to increase us. Hallelujah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, welcome to Koinonia. Hallelujah. I was happy I did not have a neighbor to ask or enabled to ask me about last week's message. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you're excited to be in God's presence, please give God a big shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible speaking in Psalms 121 verse 1. It says, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 14 verse 17, it says, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. God is giving someone fruitful seasons today, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Hallelujah. Our prayer this morning is that God will feed our hearts. Our hearts will be so full of food that our results will show that we're full of it. Can you lift up your hands to heaven and just bless God for the things he has done beginning last week till now, thanking God for all the blessings he has given to you, the opportunities he has blessed you with, the protection he gave you. You didn't need to pay for it. Many people have orderlies. You had none, yet you're alive and you were at peace. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, my praise rises to you like the evening sacrifice. Recata Pratesco Rabababala Takante 
Balikanton de 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 bedia, raktoske reno siya talataka. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise, God. You deserve the fruits of my lips. Le brunde skara ba 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 se kata bata. Brete keso brete kaskai. Mane so te kata inside and outside and following from every part of the nations of the earth. Make sure God is hearing your thanksgiving and your gratitude. For the Bible says that you should come into his presence with singing. Come into his presence with songs. It may be spiritual hymns. It may be hymns from your lips. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai Adonai Shela Barakate Protes Karakata Bless him for what is said to do. Sheta barakate, e preste kateko, rakte kete brande skarakate, reko sete kete, mande setaya, a preste kata. Now begin to expand your spirit, enlarge your mind to receive from the Lord. Sete prete skarakate. Mato sekete brando skerekata, mando sekete kate, preste kete kopalas, bariande skerekate, e prete ka, a baraka, a preste kate, baria sotaka. Make sure you pray. Barusa takate, e prata katonde, a puta tata, e prete kaske rekete, e preste keti kobarata, a pera kataka. I enlarge my mind, I open up my spirit to receive of the Lord tonight. Belo stekete kate, masuta kateka, mando stekete kata barakata, bendo stekete kai. Make sure you're praying. Balu sate kata, e barakate, abila sataka, abara kita, abre takai, akika telaka. Something is landing tonight, but you must be ready and prepared. Barakataka, Brete Kateka, Mano Setekete, Pero Keskarakata, Brete Kate, Balu Satakai, Maliata, Amate Kayata, Abia Sateleki, Melo Selekatekoba, Brandi Seteketai, Balu Setekata, the natural man can receive nothing from God. The natural man cannot receive the words of God. The natural man cannot understand the light that comes from the lips of Jesus. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Mendo stekete karakataka. Seto brandes kerekate. Balia tekate. Bara satakai. Masete katea. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. 
He says, Thou will show me the path of life. For in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures evermore. It began with a cry that, Oh God, I know if I follow you, you will show me the path of life. And at the end of that road is first fullness of joy and pleasures at your right hand forevermore. Not sorrows. Not tears, but pleasure. But it starts first with God. Oh God, open my eyes. Open my life to the path of life. Where is the way I can follow and things will work for me? Where is the path I can follow and things will respond to me? Can you lift up your voice and pray and ask God, oh God, open my eyes in this service to the path of life. Shelakate kobarakata. I came ready. I want to know. I have tried my ways. Sometimes I have thought about what I know to do. But God, tonight I surrender to your own ways, to your path, to your means, to your light, God. Make sure you're praying. It takes a cry. It takes a cry when you lift up your voice and cry for knowledge. Knowledge will come. Show me the path to the anointing. Show me the path to prosperity. Show me the path to this favor that many have been enjoying. Show me the path to total deliverance. Show me the path to fruitfulness. Amila Sekata make demands, make demands, make demands, make demands. Shela Barakateka Bandes Karakate Abila Tekabora Sata Mandes Sotelia Rekete Kito Maya Sela Ame Shila Kate Abru Setekalas. Lift up your hands and thank God for a minute for what God has already done. This meeting is finished in heaven. It was settled in heaven. That's why it's taking place now. It will deliver what God has destined for you. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Continue to give God the thanks, give God the thanks, give God the thanks for indeed this meeting has already been settled. Give God the thanks. Can we now reflect that in the shout of praise? In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Can somebody make a joyful noise? Oh, to the Lord. Yeah. your blessings name them one by one yeah. come on count your blessings see what God has done count your blessings and name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done Yes, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. You say, yeah. Count your blessing, you. The 
There is a miracle in this room yeah. with my name on it. There is a breakthrough in this room and it's got my name on it. Oh yeah. There is an anointing in the room and it is here for me. Hallelujah. So I'm going to put a praise on
Katando Kasata. Behold, what the Oku Eriata. Let the Kapatika Ilatasha. Let us come and behold. I worship Chiro Kudi Kue.
Let us rise as incense before the Lord. Let him hear you. And let it become an incense that is acceptable before the Father. From a simple place, let your worship arise. There is a place my heart cries out for Lord. I there is a place that I'm yearning for. I it is a place. Only the deep calls on to deep. I am overwhelmed by this deep longing. Take me Lord, yeah. into the secret place, Lord. Hold me by the hand. Into the holy place. I run a cozy tired. Let me see your place. Hey, and your glory, Lord. Mama, my Kataza Kapaya. Let me know you, Lord. I am not, then I've known you, Lord. Hey, take me, Lord. Into the secret place, Lord. And why are people who are crying tonight? Hold us by the hands. In the map of Pacatica, what I cast up here, and I could not be asked. Let me see your face. Ah, let me know you, Lord. Ah, let me know you, Lord. Then I've known you, Lord. I, uh, my altar is calling you, oh God. Is calling you, oh God. My heart is yearning for you, oh God. My heart is calling you, oh God. Can somebody call out? It's calling. I am taking you. 
lift up our voices and just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead and worship Him. Go ahead, just make your sound to the Lord. Make your sound to the Lord. Make your sound to the Lord. Go ahead, just make your sound to the Lord. Making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. The waters have been stirred already. Lift up your voice and pray in other tongues. Paul said, I will play, pray in the Spirit and I will pray in my understanding. You came here hungry tonight. You came here desperate. This is your moment. This is your moment. Lift up your voices and just cry in the Spirit. Someone is still praying. Shila baraka bakata kapari ataka. Erata kapakote kapari ataka pashala barasta kai. Erata bakata kapari ataka barute kevela da pari ataka. Ambrasta kaparata kapala da kapari ataka baka. Raka bakata kaparute kevara da pari ataka. Araka pashala barasta kapari ataka. Mande kaparaka pa 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 shala parasta kai. Can we just take out the next few minutes and just pray in the Holy Ghost? The waters have been stirred already. Shila parasta kai. Mam brasta kapakote kevara da kai. Raka bala da kapariya ta kapragati la da pariasta. Raka te kapakata kaparata bala ta kapriya namakai. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. E -I -E -I -E. Come on, go ahead and pray. We're still praying. Out of Koinonia shall flow power, rivers of living waters. E -I -E -I -E. La 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 la. There's such a staring of the spirit of prayer. Raga bakoste kevaraste karia taka. Habrasta kapariando kovalast. Raga baria te kevarante kobaria tabai. Habrata kapabaria taka balute kevara. Raga banama kabria tabala baraka bakas. Rata kapakote kebrana makaria. Raga balata babria taka bakoria. Abate kebela te kabaria takai. Abrante kaparia tai. Hey, the Bible says he speak a parable to the end that man ought always to pray and not to faint one of the ways by which we lay hold of our possessions in Christ is to pray is to pray can we take out just one two minutes and just cry in the Holy Ghost Parade ka 
Paraska, Abrataka Pariate, Abrataka Paporia, Abrataka Paria Takas Tekava. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. When I leave this world, I will go in prayer. I came by prayer. I will stay in prayer. When I leave this world, I will go in prayer. I will pray. 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 Roko bakastefa paranteka pariatai. Honestly, this is all we do to plunge ourselves into the depth of what God desires to do in our life. Then it will be worth it. Lift up your voice and just pray. Holy fire, burn upon my altar from within me. Spirit, you take over. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I have the honor to welcome each and every one of us. This is Koinonia, the place of intimacy, partnership and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This is part of the experiences that God brings us into every time we gather and converge in such an apostolic meeting. Hallelujah. Just one scripture to prepare our heart for that which God is said to do in our midst tonight. Jude and verses Three, Jude 1 and verses 3. It says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I make bold to say that we're not just that generation that have been privileged to become custodians of the laws and the mysteries of this kingdom. Hallelujah. There are men and women who have treaded this path, who have walked this path, and God also have made them custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning so that we through the comforts of scripture might find hope. Hallelujah. But there are two very interesting words I want us to consider in this verse. The first word is the word faith, and the second word is the word contend. Hallelujah. So I believe that the word faith there is not just talking about our belief in the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. Or the corresponding action we take based upon our conviction of who God is. Standing for my revelation of his ability and integrity. This faith here also speaks of every single truth, every single principle, and every single doctrine that forms the border within which our Christian practices and activities happen. Hallelujah. And the second word we see here is the word contend. That means it is warfare. The Bible says the same way Janus and Jemres withstood Moses is the exact same way that the truth of God's word will be contended with in our age and time. Hallelujah. And I believe that one of the ways by which we contend for the truth to keep and to preserve it is by the ministry of the teaching priest. And gladly God has prepared for us a teaching priest tonight who will expose us to yet another measure of the mysteries of the kingdom. I just have one admonishment for us tonight that our hearts be prepared and open to receive every single thing God has in store for us. In 30 seconds, can we lift up our voice and pray? 
and say, Lord, my heart is ready. My heart is ready. Every single time we have an opportunity to welcome every one of us, it also shuttles as an opportunity to initiate everyone into the very experience of all of the possibilities that should be expected in a typical koinonia service and one of which is the exposition of the mysteries of the kingdom can we pray and say lord my heart is ready in jesus mighty name we have prayed please help me walk up to three people and tell them you're welcome to koinonia hallelujah are we glad to be before the lord tonight koinonia praise the lord can we put our hands together for Jesus one more time as we have our seats? Hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, thank you for praying. The atmosphere is charged. Tell them, the atmosphere is charged. Hallelujah. In the same vein, we expect that you begin to create an expectation for tonight's service. Create an expectation for what you want God to do for you. I welcome each and every one of us to Koinonia. This is a place of intimacy a place of partnership and fellowship with the holy spirit hallelujah praise the lord can we just shout a thunderous hallelujah together no that's not enough we're gonna shout it one more time so that they know that this is koinonia praise jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Those of us connecting online, just comment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a place of intimacy, like I say, a place of partnership and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There is nothing impossible for God to do in an atmosphere such as this. This is a place, an atmosphere of diverse kinds of possibilities. There are many who have traveled from different parts of the world for different reasons. Whatever has brought you to this place, there is something for you from tonight's service. There is no service that is the same. Every service is a time for miracles. Every service is a time for signs and wonders. Every service is a time to learn, to feast upon the light of God's word. Every service is a time to draw wisdom. The Bible says, it says, they should come, all ye that hunger and thirst. Come and buy, come and drink without cost. It is available here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So on behalf of Jesus, the head over this church, I have the privilege and of course, on behalf of Apostle Joshua Selman to welcome each and every one of us here to Koinonia. But most especially, I have the privilege also to welcome the first timers and missed us in tonight's service. If it is your very first time connecting with us, whether online or on site on these grounds, can you just rise to your feet? Let's celebrate you. This is the part of the service dedicated to you. Can we put our hands together for them as they rise to their feet? <laughs> Hallelujah. Rise to your feet, rise to your feet. The galleries, the basement, the halls, the overflows, wherever you are, under the sound of our voice, we welcome you specially. Connecting online, uh, you'll be welcomed by our online media shortly. And those connecting online, just welcome them. Say welcome, first timers, so they know that God is doing something mighty in this house tonight and they are not exempted. Praise the Lord. I welcome each and every one of us. Right about now, a team of PR officials will be putting into your hands a welcome card containing vital information about this ministry. Please take it from them and fill it legibly. We request that you fill in your uh, information on the bio data, just the bottom part of the card which is being issued to you right now. Fill it in legibly and on the flip side of the same card, just right behind the same card, is a column for prayer request. That which has troubled you, we want you to write it down. It may not be our miracle service tonight, but um, the Lord can do a sign and wonder for you tonight. Every service is a miracle service. The Lord will minister to your request, that which troubles you. He will turn it around tonight in the name of Jesus. So please take it from them and fill it in. Once you are done, please detach it, detach that copy and pass it to the usher or the PR official standing beside you. They will take it from you and uh, of course include you in the database for future communications from the ministry. It is 
our joy also that you continue to fellowship with us as a ministry. The Lord might have brought you to this place, not just for a first time encounter, but for you to be planted here, to be nourished, to be fed, uh, so you grow in the wisdom of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can be guaranteed of a victorious life. You can be guaranteed of a victorious Christian experience. Praise the Lord. All right, so it is time to pray for you. It is our culture in this house. Koinonia, can we stretch forth our hands to pray for this one standing, this ones that the Lord has brought to us as additions to this ministry. Let's speak over them. We are praying. Wherever you are, just prophesy unto them. In the name of Jesus, the hands of the Lord will remain mighty upon you. You will begin to experience a supernatural Christian experience. You begin to be powered by the life of God. No weapon fashioned against you is permitted to prosper from today onwards. In the name of Jesus, the reason, by reason of you being present in tonight's service, it is a covenant unto God that goodness, blessings of the Lord shall be your portion from today and words tonight onwards in the name of Jesus. The favor of the Lord upon this ministry will be opened up to you and it is our year of open doors. In the name of Jesus, you will experience perpetual open doors in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. Your life will never remain the same and you'll be a testament that Jesus is revealed and glorified in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they take their seats in God's house. God bless you. If you are celebrating Jesus, you can make it louder tonight. Celebrate the Lord. Amen. I don't know if there's anyone that is expectant for miracles tonight. It may not be our regular miracle service, but every koinonia service is laced with signs and wonders and the miraculous. Don't forget we have a covenant with God of answered prayers. And tonight that request, that expectation in your heart shall be granted in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you believe with me that tonight will be your own night for an encounter that is unforgettable, can you celebrate the miracle worker like you're expecting tonight? I'm waiting for you, I'm waiting for you. Can you celebrate the miracle worker tonight? Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Last week we learned that what happens to you is not as important as your perception or your interpretation of what happens to you. Because that's what would determine the result and your victory. The Bible says in Luke 21 verse 13, it shall turn to you for a testimony. Can you tell your neighbor, it shall turn to you for a testimony. Say it again, it shall turn to you for a testimony. If you believe this, give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Amen. All right, while we are waiting for your own testimony, some people already have testimonies. And I'd like you to please join me as I invite upstage the following persons who have experienced God's power and His intervention. And they have a testimony already. Can you please celebrate as I invite upstage Fatima Adeze Muazu? Fatima Adeze Muazu. Are you celebrating her as she comes upstage? We also have tonight Thomas Tanko Samuel. Thomas, Tanko, Samuel. And then we, the last but not the least here, we have Daniel John. Can you please celebrate the following persons as they make their way upstage tonight? Hallelujah. All right, the first testimony here from those online and also people from all around the world is from Sonja Wella. Sonja Wella. This testimony came all the way from Germany. Sonjawella says, my husband used to give me a difficult time about my faith and activities. He was generally unkind to me, using harsh words, especially when it came to the things of God. I was privileged to visit Koinonia as a guest from Germany, and I was able to meet with the apostle. I spoke to him about what I was going through 
He prayed for me and laid hands on me. Since then, my husband has been kind to me. He even asks about church. He goes to church and also listens to messages with me. Can you join her and celebrate the Lord for that miraculous turnaround? You are next in line for a miracle in your family and marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. The next is from Josephine. Josephine is from Europe. Josephine says, since I joined Koinonia Global in July 2021, my spiritual life and other aspects of my life have encountered tremendous change. That same year, 2021, I fervently prayed to God for natural conception. I've been married for four years without a child, she says, causing much contention and pressure from my husband. Plus, my age added torment to my mind. My husband impatiently applied for new medical insurance that could support the IVF as he initially proposed to me. However, I believed every declaration by God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, concerning the fruit of the womb. I said this to my non-believing husband, firmly standing on God's faithfulness. During the prayer session, for the November 2021 miracle service, Apostle mentioned a case of some women undergoing lower, lower abdominal pains, saying women that women with that situation should lay their right hands on the area. Then he prayed, I had been experiencing sharp piercing pains for about two years around my lower abdomen. So I placed my hands in faith to my amazement the pain instantly disappeared. Can you celebrate God for that? If you have an idea of the kind of pain we are talking about, you will celebrate Jesus better than that. Can we celebrate God for that instant miracle? You are next in line for an instant miracle tonight in the name of Jesus. After that, I naturally conceived. And to the glory of God, the following year, I gave birth to a handsome baby boy. She says here, I named him Jonathan, which means God has given. I have also connected my family in Uganda to Koinonia. Due to the many negative patterns we have been experiencing, such as financial setbacks, age-long patterns of mysterious sicknesses, and even deaths that had claimed the number of the family members, and even loss of employment. Hallelujah. I shared apostles' messages with them and prayed with them online. And to the glory of God, one of my brothers got his re-employment back to his former boss. And my family has been experiencing massive transformation since we connected to this grace. Can we celebrate God for these miracles? She says here, yeah, thank you, Apostle, for your sacrifices and obedience to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The next testimony is that of Joy. Joy says, I had, I had severe stinging pain in my right leg for about three weeks that came and abated regularly. It was so painful, I couldn't wear my footwear properly. During the October 2023 miracle service, just last month, Apostle mentioned a case of pain in the leg that affected the veins. I keyed in and shouted a loud amen as he prayed against it and declared healing. After the service, I went home. Although the pain was still there when I got home, the frequency had reduced. By Monday and then finally on Tuesday, the pain had totally disappeared. If you came to church with any pain in your body, tonight you will not see it again in the name of Jesus Christ. The next testimony is that of Oscar from Bahrain. Oscar from Bahrain. Oscar says, 
while live streaming Koinonia service, I dozed off and had a dream, practically an encounter. And in the dream, Apostle appeared and prayed for me. After which I woke up and I also prayed. On the 13th of November, just a few days ago, the next day, a septic tank exploded at my workplace, killing one and injuring a few others badly. I was standing at not so far a distance behind the tanker when the explosion took place. The impact was so great, it knocked me off my feet. I fell down on my feet and I was very weak. But to the glory of God, I got up, checked myself. I was still all together in one piece. No scratch, no bleeding. I'm in perfect health. Can we celebrate God for the testimony of Oscar? All the way from Bahrain. Can you declare, no evil shall befall me. No plague will come near my dwelling. A thousand may fall by my right hand and 10,000 by my side, but it shall not come near me. Can you shout hallelujah? The next testimony is that of Tabitha. Tabitha says, I write to testify of the Lord's doings in my life. The story of the woman who bled for 12 years has left me wondering how this woman made it to 12 years of bleeding. She says, I bled heavily for just two months continuously. And she can't imagine what that woman must have gone through bleeding for 12 years. When Apostle Selman encouraged us to volunteer and register for the USA and the Canada conference, I did it without hesitation, she says. In the week before then, on a Sunday morning, we had the workers' Zoom meeting just two weeks ago, thereabout. And I joined online. And I must confess, it was one of the best things that has ever happened to me. This is one of the volunteers for the Canada conference. Can you celebrate Jesus for the oncoming conferences in U.S. and Canada? Hallelujah. Apostles spoke online as he ministered to us through the Zoom call prophetically on my matter regarding my blood condition. And I woke up on the Thursday following that week completely healed. The bleeding had stopped completely. The pains have disappeared. I'm completely well. Can you join Tabitha to celebrate the Lord? Are you celebrating the Lord? Give him a loud clap and a loud shout. The last but not the least is from Selena from Ghana. Selena testifies and says, I write of the healing of God in my life. For a long time, she says, I had been feeling pains and also some lumps in my breasts. The pains were to the extent of me having difficulty in lying down flat. There was a time I couldn't even wear an underwear because of the pains. Coupled with other physical signs, the pains seemed to be getting worse, she says. Being a medical student myself, I panicked a little. I then tapped into various testimonies and prayers for healing as I also inquired from the Lord about the situation. And he said that he had healed me and that I will not die. However, the signs lingered. So I presented it again to God during the September miracle service. I keyed into the prayers made by Apostle Selman when he was speaking by word of knowledge concerning a lady with pain in, in the breast. And I believed God for the testimonies to manifest. Finally, I felt like going for a test. I went to an hospital and after the tests, they showed that my breasts were normal, 
The pains have finally disappeared. I'm completely healed and whole. Can we join Selena to celebrate this great and mighty God? Can we just lift our hands tonight and give God praise for all these testimonies, interventions of God, miracles, supernatural provisions, and mighty acts of God from all around the world. I'd like you to declare again, it shall turn to me for a testimony. All right, I'd like us to just pay attention to the testimonies of our brethren that are live here and be blessed. Your name, please, and what the Lord has done for you. Praise the Lord, Koinonia. Hallelujah. My name is um, Fatima Adezimwazu. Um, I was born in a Muslim family and a fanatic one. And then when I was 16, my dad did something to us he thought was good. He made us swallow seven needles. And then he put some incisions. I still have the incisions on me, on our skin, my hands, legs, even that of my siblings. I, we, while I was a Muslim, I actually thought it was something good. You know, he told us it was a cult and it was a cult of God and all. And then I encountered Jesus. I had a dream. I was preaching to a crowd in hijab. And then I was like, Auzubillah, Yimine Shaitan, Yurajim. When I woke up, I rejected it. And then God had to speak to me through a madman. That was when I finally gave my life to Christ and renounced Islam. <laughs> then... Then I remember I, I was 18 years and I was like, God, I've wasted literally 18 years of my life. Where, how do I catch up? And then I had a dream. Then I didn't know it was Catherine Kuma and Daddy Selman. I had a dream. I saw a woman and then she called me and she said, bless you, child. She took me to a building and daddy was teaching and she said, join Joshua Selman, you would grow properly. And that was how, that was how I had access to Koinonia messages through one of my friends called David. He sent the whole Koinonia messages from 2013 then to my phone. And then I thought I was free. I thought things were fine. I didn't know I still have that um, wicked spirit inside of me. I, there was this weight inside of me. It destroyed my education. Things were not going fine as I thought they would. And then it affected my health to the point the doctors told me I had just three months to live. But I came across the mystery of deliverance and then I listened parts one, two, three, four. And then I got the understanding of how much God loved me, the power of his name and the power of his blood. And within that moment, when the doctor said I had three months to live, then I decided to go on a seven days fast in that pain. And then I, there was this program that he had done. It was called the seven days, seven days supernatural encounters and vision where he thought on the mystery of the serpent and the woman, the mystery of strongholds. And then I followed everything after which I praised around my medical report. I had a dream that daddy asked me to stand up from a coffin. After that, I I was grateful to God, but I was really concerned about my family. And God led me to his message, awake thou that sleepeth. And then I decided to take responsibility from what I had learned from the message and went on a three months fast. During the three months fast, it was all about my family, salvation. And then every single day, I listened to two Koinonia messages. And within that three months, I remember my dad was like, um, this Rawania spirit, your sister has destroyed everything because we had very sour relationship and then he said he's going to put a higher spirit on my siblings but can't do that to me and he said for that spirit he would have to do 66 incisions on my siblings head so I knowing what I had gone through I, I was like no God this can't happen and God stepped in the malam who was supposed to do those 66 incisions in his head on their head was like no these children are too small and too innocent for this and then my mom gave her life to Christ in the process. And then... And then she told me she had this courage, I mean, this leading to talk to my siblings. In that three months, all my siblings, the three of them, gave their life to Jesus. 
Are you celebrating the Lord tonight? Salvation is coming to your home as well in the name of Jesus. Thirdly, it cost my education. While it going to my final year, I could not proceed. So I had to start school afresh. I was supposed to graduate at the age of 19, but I started school afresh from scratch with my siblings. Now I wrote my final exams, submitted my project. My siblings are in school. I want to thank God for the gift of men, and I want to appreciate Daddy because I, I don't know the joy. I, the joy I have in my heart has no bound knowing that my family is saved. I'm grateful. Can we join Fatima from all around the world to celebrate this saving Jesus? Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Can you just declare Jesus is my Savior? Jesus is my savior. Your name, sir, and what the Lord has done for you. Good evening, Koinonia. My name is Thomas Tanko Samuel. <laughs> I am here to testify and to thank God and to testify for his goodness and mercy upon my life. I, when I came to Abuja, I came as a security, work as a security. And when I was working in the church, because I said I don't want to do anything like security work. But when my friend just called me, they said, because they always nurse me as a, they call me pastor. So they said, it's in church. I said, okay, let me come and do this work so that I will gather something to open my shop because I was learning, uh, I was learning work then. And by the grace of God, when I came to Abuja, listening to Koinonia message, and uh, a woman was in that church, and then she's always coming to this Koinonia, and then she said, you, you are listening to Apostle's message to her, say, yes, but I don't know him, I'm listening, I like the message, and the message is transforming me, changing me, if I want to do anything, then in fact, it's a message that is directing me. So, and she said, okay, the place that she's going and coming back late on Sunday, that is to open gate for her, that she's always coming from Koinonia. If I wish to join her, I said, Pusha, I will join you. I will join you. But how much will cost me to that place where I live? I will be permitted. Then she said she will join me with uh, someone that will bring me here free. And by the grace of God, I joined her. They took me here free, back free, and always. Now, the woman that she joined me with now took me as and they said, Thomas, now I have a job in my office. So if you want to join me. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Okay. From there, I said, okay. But if I leave this job now and join you in office, you know, in Abuja, I don't know anybody in Abuja. Where will I stay? And I don't have any money that I can pay for rent. She said, if I'm the one, she will give me, I can stay with her. She will give me her room to stay free. And uh, I said, well, now I can stay now. Going to the work will be the problem. She said, no problem now. That she, and I, praise God. Uh, she's the manager in that place. She was the manager. So she said that we will be going to the work together and come back together. <laughs> and I say, okay then. But I look at it as if it's something that. Uh, so I said to oh God, thank you. So when I joined her, immediately. Um, she quit from the job. She's not working. She's no longer working there. So going to the work, I was looking at it. It's so something difficult to me. I bet then she sponsored my transport, sponsored my transport till I finish. And they pay me my salary. 
I was like, ma, I am paid now in the salary. What will I do? She just, in fact, said, no problem this year. I want to just try to remember your family. And from there, uh, that was uh, July. So July ending started August. In the month of August, going and come back, in fact, before the end of the month, the salary was like, because of the cost of this transport, salary, Can you go to the, that testimony? Amen. And that Praise God. Praise God. Um, then I said, I need to quit this job. So it was uh, August. In the middle of August, I quit this job. So I don't know what to do. I was like, can I go back to the place I talked to her? And she said, okay. And, uh, but on the last day of uh, August, in the evening, she called me that now they have, um, they sent a uh, destiny to their platform, a job vacancy, if I can apply. When I look at it, I say, well, but I'm not qualified for this job. I say, my bet, I'm not qualified. She said I should just go and try. And she gave me a book on faith by Kenneth Hagin. I've been reading, so my faith is growing now. I am not strong in faith. Then I said, okay, let me apply. When I apply so for the job, happened? that day, immediately they invited me the next day for an interview. When I went for an interview, I, I said, well, when I came back, I said, in fact, God has done it to just like we are discussing, the, just uh, say immediately I came back. So um, I stay from I stay from that August till I'm going to have to wrap it up for you. Yeah, he God. got the job, God. the long and short. Is better employed now. Can we celebrate God for the testimony of our brother? I'm sure we have learned it again and again in this house. One of the evidences of favor is the loyalty of men. If it happens just once, it's his breakthrough. But when it happens again and again, like it was happening to him, that was divine favor. Can you celebrate God for his testimony tonight? Your name, sir, and what the Lord has done for you. Good evening, Koinonia. Good evening. My name is Daniel John. I'm here to testify to the glory of God for what he has done in my life. Um, my testimony is actually in two parts. The first part is marital settlement. I was trusting God for marital settlement. I've been attending Koinonia way back in Zaria. So when I was posted, I'm an Air Force personnel, so when I was posted to Abuja here, and Koinonia equally followed me to Abuja. So, to God be the glory. I always come here for fellowship. There was a time when things were not going well. I have been asking God and praying, trusting God for marital settlement. When the time comes for that, not only that I got married, but I got married from a section of the country where for you to marry it from that place, you have to use your lifetime savings in advance. <laughs> yes. Please go on with your testimony. Praise the Lord. But to God be the glory, my own case is not the same. I spent less than 500,000 for the marriage. It wasn't because I'm righteous or not, but because of the word of God that comes through this commission. I keyed into it, trusting God for breakthrough, and that has been my experience. Hallelujah. I come to say thank you and to return thanks to God for that. And to equally thanks Daddy for allowing himself to be used by God. Secondly, um, my boss had a ghastly motor accident and he had a spinal uh, injury. He was on bed for about two months plus. First miracle service 
January 2021, part of my prayer point is God's healing. We prayed, sorry, I wrote the prayer request during the prayer, miracle prayer service. Um, servant of God prayed over and he equally mentioned his condition. By that time he was using neck collar. He can't do anything on his own. Unassisted, he can't do anything. So after the prayer, he said that we should pick our phones and call those people that we are trusting God for healing, even if they are not around. Which I pick up my phone, I called, I asked him, that, sir, see where I am, and this is the situation on ground. Can you please remove that nail collar that you, are, that you are wearing? He said, John, I said, yes, sir, can you just do that for me? You say, John, you know I'm a cardiologist. I know the implication. I say, yes, sir, can you please do that for me? To God be the glory. He removed it. He turned his side. Turned his side. As I'm talking, as I'm talking to the glory of God, my boss is stronger than me. Praise the Lord. I applied for director service uh, commissioning. I have nobody from a humble background. It's part of my prayer point in that day. That same week, on Wednesday, around 10 a.m., I was at work. One of the staff just came to my office and said, John, congratulations. I said, congratulations. I said, I don't understand. Congratulations. Okay, so you don't even know. I said, no, I don't know, sir. What is it? Then he went back to his office and printed the page that the list of the successful candidates were uh, passed. So I checked. From my state, I think we were three. Some state two, some state three. I went to NDA. I trained. By the grace of God, I passed out. I was posted to Lagos. Immediately from NDA, I went to Lagos. I was not having opportunity to come and testify to the glory of God before going. Because as at that time, I think it was on the 17th, by that time, Koenonia for the year was, uh, there was no fellowship. We were on break, break, so yes. to say, for the year. So I waited on January. This year, I started work. No pass for me. I applied severally until last week. I said, I have to come and testify to the glory of God for all that he has done in my life. And I pray that some of us that are trusting God for one thing or the other, whether on site or online, put your trust on God. And to the instruction that will be coming, what that has been passed on before now through the man of God, your testimony will be more than what I'm testifying. Can we join Mr. Daniel John to celebrate this great and mighty God? He's a bundle of testimonies. There are a lot of testimonies here. Divine healing for his boss, financial breakthrough, new job, promotion at work, marital settlement, among others. Can we lift our voices and just bless this great God? Can we return all the glory to him for all the testimonies tonight? miraculous salvation of an entire family, supernatural interventions of the Lord, healing from lumps, and all kinds of deliverances. Somebody, can you shout hallelujah? I thought someone would do better than that for the king of kings. Is that the best you can do for your maker, the doer of all the testimony? Come on, come on, celebrate Jesus. Praise God. I'd like you to just help me ask your neighbor, who is the doer of all? Ask another person, who is the doer of all? Were you blessed by those powerful testimonies? In just a few minutes, can you bow your head and just bless the name of the Lord? Just tell him thank you. Let him hear your voice. Has God been good to you? Bless him from the depth of your heart. Let him hear your voice and say, Lord, thank you. We are grateful. You have done us well. Look at the testimony of our sister, everyone, her mother, her siblings, salvation. Can you go ahead and bless him and say, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. 
Koinonia Global, go ahead. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, can you go ahead and bless him? I say, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We have come to return the glory, the praise, the honor, and the adoration to you. In just a few minutes, can we bless the name of the Lord for the life of our Father? And say, Lord, we thank you for your servant. Thank you for the unusual grace. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for the strength, for strengthening him. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you. Just a few minutes to bless him. This is not for you, but for our Father. This is the best we can call. You global and say, Lord, we thank you. You have kept him. You have strengthened him. Your grace upon his life, we are grateful for the teaching, for teaching us. We thank you. In a few minutes, can you let heaven know that you are here? And say, Lord, visit me. Send your word. Do not pass me by. Someone will pray for his family or her family and say, Lord, give me the salvation. Don't let my family, don't let my parents go to hell. Thank God for car. Thank God for, for houses. Salvation is a, is a thing you have to pray for. Thank God. Pray for your boss. Mention their name. Lord, my siblings, I know you have been praying for them. Can you pray under this atmosphere again? I say, Lord, don't let my parents go to hell. Don't let my boss, my loved ones, my children, don't let them go to hell. Visit them, O oh Lord. Give me their soul. Let them come to the saving knowledge of Christ. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. Can someone celebrate God one more time? <laughs> Quickly, can we have those paying their tithe? If you are paying your tithe inside, please can you just make your way to the front. Tithe us all the overflow, the basement. Please walk to the front of your LED screen. You are paying your tithe. I'd like you to package your tithe, your offering, your seed, your prophetic seed. Luke 6, 38, say give and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, will men give to you. He said the same measure you give, the same measure will be measured back to you. I'd like you to package your seed, your offering, your kingdom investment, your vow, your prophetic seed, your thanksgiving offering, your sacrificial giving. And I'm encouraging and charging someone to take advantage of the ministry account detail display on the screen for paying your tithe and giving your offering. You are here, you are not with cash. Please just signify the PR officials or the ushers who get the POS across to you so you can pay your tithe and give your offering. You pay your tithe. Your tithe is 10 percent. You give your offering. Your offering is your demonstration of your love for God. Please can we lift up our tithe, our offering to heaven and speak to God concerning our tithe, concerning your offering. The Bible said, he said, for God is able to make all grace abound towards you. He said, bring all the tithe into my storehouse that they may be meet. Prove me now. Prove me with what? With your tithe. Say the Lord, not the prophet. It was the Lord speaking. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing. And pour you a blessing. He said, let every man give as he has proposed in his heart. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. So anytime you are privileged to give to God, to give your offering, pay your tithe, be excited, be happy. Give joyfully. Give with understanding. Give because you love God. So which means don't let anybody manipulate you because giving starts from your heart. What about your prophetic seed? He said, by a prophet, the Lord brought them out. How about your, your sacrificial giving? Some of us, the same offering since the beginning of the year. The same offering. Calculate the blessing of God upon your life. Praise God. The Bible says, by faith, Abel offer. I'm still giving you time to pray. Whether you're online, distance is not a barrier. Speak to God concerning your offering. Lord, I have come to honor you. I'm tired of this realm, giving this realm. Lord, I, I, I desire for my offering to enter into foreign currency. I desire, I pray, oh God, that you will shift me financially. That I will not even be able to use the ministry envelope to package my offering. Not just your tithe. Pray. It's possible to enter into financial overflow. If you believe it and you desire it, you have seen what God is doing in the life of people and in this ministry. Lord, take away shame. Take away this financial hardship and stagnation. Break the back, the bone of lack and poverty. 
you can give your way into prosperity. It's possible. Press down, shaking together, running over. There is a dimension like that that you can step it into. He said, for God is able to make all grace abound. When you pray, some certain things happen to you, but when you give all grace, the, including the grace to make your children, everyone around you behave well. So don't just give money and expect money. There are many dimensions that comes to you. Father, we thank you for everyone that have come to honor you with their tithe, with their offering. We pray, oh God, that the blessing of tithe and giver will locate you in the name of Jesus. We speak that the Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and the Lord give you peace. I pray that this season and this week, the Lord put your name in the heart of men to bless you. The Lord put system and structure under pressure to promote you. In the name of Jesus, when the enemy arise, knock at the gate of your destiny, may your seed answer. May your sacrificial giving answer. May your prophetic seed answer. In the name of Jesus, your seed for kingdom advance, and may he speak for you at the gate of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, we release you to go and return with an avalanche of financial testimony. In the name of Jesus, please cast your offering, your seed with joy and gladness of heart. For all the testimonies we heard here tonight, hallelujah. Tonight we've come with a prayer. We've come with a cry. It's a very simple song. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Power to prosper. Rest on me. Until I live. Shivaran and Nico. Ever let so many a potato. For me, I am. Shamble the Italian Sibidia. Say, let your power. Let your power. Let it rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me. It's real simple. Say it again. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me. Rest on me. Say, let your power, power to prosper, rest on me.
Rest on me, Spirit of God. Rest on me, Shepherd. Ye malaka soberiata. Ye meleshi minite. Hey. Let your spirit, Holy Spirit, rest on me. Rest on me. Let your spirit, Holy Spirit, rest on me. Rest on me. Let your spirit, Spirit of wisdom, walk with me. Hey. Walk with me. Let your spirit. your power for signs and wonders rest on me let your spirit with ancient wisdom rest on me and breathe on me let your power rest on me let your power, let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest, hey, say rest on me, rest on me, rest on me, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, say rest on me, rest on me. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15. We'll just pray this song and then we'll be seated. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and a fruitful field be counted for a forest. Can you go ahead, take the next five minutes to pray this song. All of the graces that you heard them mention, turn it into prayer. Go ahead. Let it rest on me indeed. The power to prosper. Your wisdom. The power for signs and wonders. Someone is praying. The grace called favor. Harato shabrande gebereto siyas. Skate palato shabrande gebereto skavredish. Someone pray. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. When the grace is upon of your life, it speaks instantly and loudly. Shada bakato shabranda geberetos, krate gabalata shabranda gebelekatos. Someone is crying for the power to prosper, the antidote for lack, want, begging, borrowing. Are you praying? The power for the supernatural, commanding signs and wonders. Pray for the grace called favor. Define your possibilities in this wicked, selfish, bedeviled world. Let favor single you out. Turn you to a sign and a wonder. For in Jesus, 
mighty name we pray. In Jesus mighty name we pray. I want you to listen to this before you sit down. The ignorant believer will always remain a defeated believer. Being a believer notwithstanding, the ignorant believer will always remain a defeated believer. The ignorant believer will always remain a defeated believer. Hosea 4 and verse 6 says, My people, even though they are my people, they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. The blessing that we have received in this Zoe life is accessed experientially by knowledge. So just because you have received the life of God does not mean you will have the experience of that life, not without knowledge. Hallelujah. We're still going to pray one more prayer. Please lay your hands on your head and cry for knowledge. Father, what I need to know tonight, as far as my walking in victory, my excelling, my prospering, my walking in signs and wonders is concerned, let it be released upon my life. I am a receiver tonight. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. We'll sing that song one more time while you are praying. Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. And God is able to make all grace. That means grace is dimensional. All grace to abound towards you. Why? That ye always having all sufficiency in all things, not some things, may abound unto every good work. It is impossible to abound unto every good work until these various dimensions of graces find expression in your life. For instance, if you are limited in wisdom, that alone will keep you defeated forever. If you lack favor, you will live a hard life that will plunge you into compromise and decadence. The advantage of these graces is that they empower the believer to become an expression of the glory of God indeed. I'm praying for you tonight that every grace that is missing in your life may tonight be the moment where you access it. I say it again, every dimension of grace that is missing, that he that though it has not yet found expression in your life, may this be the night that you will access it in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please be seated. Good evening, everybody. Blessings to our global family. Let's get to work. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Hallelujah. We've been on 
a series of spiritual vaccination against failure, against losses, against defeat. Hallelujah. And tonight, by the grace of God, we'll be having the last dose of that spiritual vaccine from deliverance from calamity, then lessons from an overcomer. These are a series of teachings. They are named different things, but they are all survival strategies. These are kingdom strategies that help the believer to thrive and to survive. These are end time strategies. If you have missed any of these, please discipline yourself and get these teachings, deliverance from calamity, lessons from an overcomer, and then you listen with all your heart. Are you ready from for tonight's teaching? All right, so tonight um, we're obtaining grace. The focus of the teaching tonight is to find out the mystery behind longevity of impact. We'll be learning tonight why great people fall. We'll be learning tonight why people celebrate victory today and exploits, and then tomorrow they are no more in the scene. Are you ready? The title of the teaching tonight is Ichabod, Obtaining Grace to Last. Ichabod is spelled I-C-H-A-B-O-D, Ichabod. First Samuel 4, we're reading from verse 1. Help us, Spirit of the living God, in Jesus' name. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. It's a long reading, be patient. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew the army in the field, about 4,000 men. So Israel is being defeated now. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. Verse 4. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Verse 6. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was coming to the camp. Uh -huh. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for there hath not been such a thing hitherto. Woe to us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines. They're encouraging themselves now. That ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourselves like men and fight. So they went on to fight all the same. And the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten even though the ark was there. They fled every man to his tent, and there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. Verse 11. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent, and with the earth upon his head. And when he came, lo, Eli sat upon the seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it all, all the city cried out, 14. 
And when Eli heard the noise of crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. 15. Now Eli was 90 and 8 years old, and his eyes were dim, and he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? He's finding out the information now. And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. And there had been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God is taken. 18. And it came to pass, when he made mention of the ark of God, that Eli fell from off his seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck brake, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. 19. And his daughter-in-law, Phinehas's wife, was with child, near to be delivered. And when she heard the thing that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed, for her pains came upon her. Verse 20. And about the time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast a son. But she answered, but she answered not, neither did she regard it. 21. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, because the ark of God was taken, because her father-in-law and her husband were all dead. Last verse. 22. And she said, The glory is departed <clears throat> from Israel, for the ark of God is taken. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. So at this time, the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, they had become very lawless boys. And then Israel went to war against the Philistines. And about 400,000 of them were defeated, or 400 or 4,000 really. And then when they were defeated, they said, no, it is because the ark of God is not in our midst. Go and get the ark and bring it in our midst. And they brought the ark thinking it would be the basis for their victory. And even with the ark in their midst, the Bible says 30,000 other people were slaughtered. The ark was taken away from them. And then Hophni and Phinehas were slain. And when Eli heard this, the Bible says he fell and he died. When his daughter-in-law, <clears throat> the now wife of the late Phinehas, when she heard this, even though it was not time, she had to travail and give birth to a child. And the people were encouraging her, don't worry, you've given birth to a son. And she said, no, I will not make it. And she named the child Ichabod. She said, the glory is departed from Israel. The word Ichabod is a Hebrew word. And it means, like you read, the glory has departed. Or without glory. Or where is the glory? So, just like Jabez, it was customary for the people in those days to name children after their experiences. Are we together now? Yes, it is a practice that till today is still strong among Jewish nations. They would name children after experiences. They would name children after all kinds of things. Now, every believer in Christ has the destiny of ever-increasing glory. Let's start from there. Every believer in Christ, you and I in Christ, we all have a destiny of ever-increasing glory. Proverbs 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. So more and more is the destiny of every believer in Christ. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 36 and verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 11. Ezekiel 36 and 11. I will multiply upon you man and beast and they shall increase and bring fruit. 
and I will settle you after your old estates. And then he says, I will do better unto you than at your beginning, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So God is committed to ensuring that our experiences are better even at the latter parts of our lives than the beginning. Every believer in Christ has the destiny of ever increasing glory. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8 tells us that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That means in the mind of God and the way God operates, the end of a thing is of more importance, of more value, and of more significance. Better is the end of anything at all than the beginning. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Now, most people are excited when they begin things in life. Begin businesses, begin a home, begin a ministry, begin schooling. Usually beginning is characterized uh, by so many things. Joy for some. If you're sending your child to school, he's about to start school. Usually he's rejoicing, not knowing what and what he will face. Sometimes beginnings start with pain. For instance, the beginning of an individual's life, you may come from a family that may not have any sense, any advantage whatsoever. Beginnings are also characterized in many regards by overconfidence. Most times you know beginners because there is a sense of overconfidence. They believe that they are able to handle life on their own and most times would not listen. Hallelujah. But for everyone usually, your beginning relative to your end starts with ignorance. So we have all of this to characterize beginnings. And it is in God's mind that no matter how an individual begins, that the end of that person's life, the end of that person's destiny becomes glorious. So it's all right to start from any state, whether poverty, whether spiritual laxity, like the dear lady who shared the salvation of her entire family, you can imagine. Hallelujah. So if you were to look at that lady 10 years ago, you probably would see a beginning that was not kingdom, not scripture compliant. But glory to God right now, you see the miracle that God has done. So it is a very powerful thing. Job 8, 7. Let me show you a scripture there. Job 8, 7. It says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should. It didn't say would. It means it is supposed to be this way. But whether it happens or not, it's a different explanation altogether. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. When the Bible says a thing should be, it doesn't mean it must be. The moment you see should be, it means that there are conditions. And if those conditions are met and are kept, then that reality becomes your manifestation. Otherwise, it will just remain as prophecy. Unfortunately, our world today is full of very pathetic stories, stories of grace to grass as we call it, and then full of very inspiring stories, stories of grass to grace. You find that in ministry, you find that in business, you find that across nations, that once upon a time individuals who were nobodies, individuals who had no comeliness, individuals who had no, there was nothing admirable or desirable about their lives and under certain conditions they began to grow, they began to evolve and some of them did it so well that they have now become references across the nations. And at the same time, the Bible is full of people who the chapters of their life started from their points of victory. We may not know so much about what happened, but at the time we met them, at the time we knew them, they were people who were celebrities, they were great, and at the end of their lives, all that we see in their lives is a catastrophe, disaster. An example is the man Gehazi. The Bible does not give us any picture about the training process of Gehazi. By the time he's introduced in scripture, he's already serving a great man with potential to even be the next prophet. But at the end of Gehazi's life, we see a man who had become leprous and left for dead. Hallelujah. 
So what is this factor that makes the end or the latter part of men's life so glorious for some and then for others it becomes an object of shame? There are names today that when you call, unfortunately, people do not want to be associated with it because of the kinds of ugly stories that are about around that name. And there are names that when you call, people will want to be part of it because it represents inspiration. Tonight you must learn how to last, how to remain. Everyone has a right to start. The Bible in fact tells us that in a race, say a marathon, there are several people who are ready to start. Maybe 30, maybe 40, maybe 100. And there are some from the beginning, they know they will not finish. They were only attempting. There were others who hope, well, let's see how it goes. But there were others who were already determined from beginning that we will finish this race. And once the gun is shot on your marks, get set, go. There are people who, they laugh at themselves while they are going because they know they are wasting their own time. They don't intend to last. After they circle the field once, twice on their own, even without being tired, they just say, no, I have to reconsider this. I'm, I'm not, it's not worth it. And then there are others with unbending determination, not smiling. You call them, they don't care. You insult them, they don't care. With that kind of determination, they keep moving until they eventually finish. Hallelujah. And so I want you to pay attention as I share with you why greatness is short-lived. I want to show you why great people fall, why great institutions become shadows of themselves. The key is to plant in us through this teaching the power to last. That starting is not enough. Are we together? Yes. Your real stamina is not measured in your ability to start. Your real stamina is measured in your ability to remain. With all due respect, in Nigeria today, I do not know how old the oldest company in Nigeria is. Perhaps maybe one of the banks or maybe some institutions. And there are just a few years. There are structures that don't last because they were not built according to standard. There are corporations and organizations that don't last. In fact, it is said that for most businesses that start, most ventures that start in Nigeria, at least 80% of them die before the end of the first year. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? That is true for churches. That is true for businesses, schools, and whatever it is. So why is greatness short-lived? Why does greatness suddenly turn to shame? What is the key that governs longevity of impact? Are you ready now? Number one, the first reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of individuals, in the life of ministries, in the life of organizations is pride. Up front, let's get that out of the way. Pride. Pride. Proverbs 16, 18. Behind everything that was once glorious and is no longer glorious, pride had a role to play. The Bible says, pride goeth before destruction. You know what it means? That means anytime you see pride dancing around your corridor, it came with escorts. Destruction and a fall is part of it. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 18, 12. The first reason why greatness is short-lived in the life of people is pride. It says before destruction, the heart of man is haughty and before honor is humility. You see how they work. Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Let's read together. Ready? One to read. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. One more time. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble. What is pride? The unashamedness to acknowledge God as the basis for where you are. The unashamedness. Or the, uh, what they call it now. Is it unashamedness? The refusal, let me use that expression. 
the refusal to acknowledge God that you step in God's way and you want to be at the center of everything to receive the credit for where you are as though you were not helped by God as though you were not helped by men the refusal to acknowledge God as the reason the basis the principal factor for whatever result you have is called pride and my goodness our world today is plagued with men and women who are already disasters going to happen in ministry in business in politics hallelujah the number one factor that sustains the ability to cut short a man's impact to cut short a man's greatness please pay attention no matter who you are if you decide to embrace a life of pride there is no longevity to your impact you see let me tell you this before a man falls he always looks like he cannot fall till he falls did you hear what I said before a man falls when you see the kind of assumed stability you would doubt and say it's impossible there is nobody who cannot go down pride James chapter 4 from verse 6 to 8 but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith God resisted the proud Koinonia, let's say this together. One to go. God resisted the proud. One more time. I have taught you here that the anointing was supposed to fight anything that is against the will of God. The anointing does not fight what is the will of God. So if God is the one resisting you, there is no amount of impartation that will give you victory. The power of God fights unclean spirits, the power of God fights situations that are inconsistent with the will of God. But if God is now the one fighting you by himself, then you are in trouble. And the Bible says there is such a condition where God can fight a man. Who wins when God fights you? The Bible says, but he giveth grace, not to the Christian, to the humble. So if the Christian is the proud, he will still become a victim of God's wrath, God's power, pride. Hallelujah. I learned this lesson in life and let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, it's easier to talk about pride when you don't have anything. It's easier to talk about pride when you are poor, when nobody knows you, when you don't have any anointing, you don't have any influence. In the presence of greatness, you will know how difficult it is to be and to remain humble. Did you hear what I said? In the presence of greatness there are people who have not done anything passing comments from people and saying this one is proud you don't have anything that should compel pride that's why in the presence of pride you will know why ne I mean the presence of greatness do you know why Nebuchadnezzar built a 90 feet stature you think he started like that he started as an ordinary man but my goodness the level of results that he had there is something called the pride of life. I have taught you that the pride of life is the, the self-exaltation that comes on account of obvious results. If you don't have results, you are just proud. Are we together? Which translates to foolishness because there is nothing to be proud about. But there are times where you have results, say results, and your results are loud, your results are clear. At such point, it becomes justifiable to be proud. After all, I have anointing. You can see it. After all, I have favor. You can see it. After all, I have influence. You can see it. After all, you have become Beulah and Hephzibah. You can see it. It is at this state. Listen, when Satan wants to stop you, he starts to stop you at the beginning of your journey. If he fails to stop you at the beginning of the journey, he will rest for a while. You will think you, are, you have defeated him, but he's waiting for you at the corridors of greatness. Because something happens to men the moment they become great. Let me repeat myself again, my dear people. Something happens to men. Every man upon the face of the earth, in the presence of greatness, the temptation of pride will always test you. 
Are we learning? Pride. Pride has destroyed preachers. Pride has destroyed businessmen. Pride has destroyed captains of industry. Pride has destroyed people in the academia. There are people who made a, a boast of several things. They are still begging till today. Pride. You get to a point where you become clear. The devil tells you, without you, this company cannot run. Without you, this ministry will not run. Do you know you are the single reason why this family is working? The moment the devil starts making you look like everything fails without you, you already know you are in trouble. And it may be true. Every house is built by some man, but the truth is that God is the builder of all. How do you know that you are suffering from pride when people no longer matter to you? You believe that everybody must bow before you and acknowledge you because of what you are doing, number one. And you believe that everybody is of less importance except you. You are the principal defining factor in that equation of success. Beware. Pride has already got into the corridor. And sometimes pride can come as a sincere communication of acknowledging your value, celebrating your value, Joshua Selman, you are doing so much traveling around the world. Usually you will start by saying, thank you of God. Very soon you will feel too big to bow. And you say, but, but come to think of it. Oh, this thing, they are not lying. Uh-huh. Are we together? And you know, most times, there are many people who, they don't do the boasting themselves, but they have arranged a system that does the boasting for them. You are still proud. Are we together? <laughs> ah, may God deliver us from pride, oh. Shout amen, oh. Shout amen. amen. This, night, this night is the night to say amen when you are supposed to say amen because this thing has destroyed people. Listen, I hope you know that that's what brought Lucifer down. I will be like the most high. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. If there is anything for you to fight as a survival strategy, ladies and gentlemen, as you rise, as God lifts you, the first thing to check in your life if you want to last is pride. Pride. You can be simple and yet proud, I hope you know. There is a difference between simplicity. There are people who are generally not simple. They are very lavish about life, but in truth, they are humble. It's just their disposition. There are others who are very simple and very proud. Then there are those who are still loud and proud altogether. Listen, you have really gotten victory if you have victory over the pride of life. There are a few things that when you really conquer, you deserve to give yourself a pat at the back. One of it, oh, is not having money in your account. Believe me, if you are able to successfully resist the spirit of pride, you have signed in for longevity of impact. With all due respect, many years ago, as many of you may have experienced, I remember... When God started out with us, my goodness, it was at a time where there were many preachers. There were many people. And those days, you would see people that you would never believe. You would think at the end of one week, even the White House would call them and say, what kind of anointing do you have? I tell you sincerely, some of those people, with all due respect today, they are, not, they are nowhere to be found because of pride. Hallelujah. There are preachers with all kinds of pride. With all due respect and not to insult, but just starting out in ministry. But my goodness, when you hear people talk sometimes, you have to hold yourself and say, my God, what kind of orientation is this? I, me, myself. And then you know sometimes as preachers, and then of course as great people generally, we have diplomatic ways of surrounding people who their assignment is to just sing our praises. And then we use this false sense of release. Well, glory be to God. But the truth is there's no glory going to God anywhere. Humility is discernible. Humility is feelable. When you stand before a humble person, you will know. You can be confident and yet humble. Do you know why? 
A humble person is ever conscious of projecting Jesus, not self. You know that you are walking in humility because the desire to stand in God's way is not even there at all. I've told the Lord, whatever he will give me that will stop men from seeing him, may it never come into my life. That, that is a useless gift. It's a gift that will end up being a burden to you, the carrier, an extra luggage that is not necessary for your destiny. And I'm saying this because while greatness inspires, sometimes let's be careful what we copy from great people. You must sustain the wisdom to edit in love. Oh, God has made Joshua Selman great. Be careful the things you copy. Don't swallow everything hook, line, and, and uh, what they call the other thing. Are we together now? Do you know there are people, this pride you see sometimes is as a result of a background of failure, especially for Africa. There are many people who missed greatness in their childhood. Are we learning? There are people who missed an opportunity to be great. Either they were insulted by parents or they were insulted by in maybe school institutions. So naturally, the moment you make it, that desire to shout it and slap it at the face of everybody, unlike your believing or your disbelieving me, I have arrived. And in case you do not know, I have an assignment to make sure I slap it on your face that I'm no longer the version you used to know. I'm now the rich version of me, the anointed version of me. I'm now the CEO version of me. And sometimes when you live long and access wisdom, you will find out that it's totally unnecessary. The pressure to prove a point and the pressure to let men know you have made it is a sign that you have not really made it. Because can I tell you, success is loud, it is visible, it is clear. When you have made it, it becomes clear. Even a blind man knows that you have made it. Don't play with me. Oh, do you know how rich I am? Does wealth hide? Where do you hide it? Does wisdom hide? Does genuine power hide? Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. If God has made you, he has made you. It's as simple as that. One of the ways to encourage people and to inspire them is to combine humility with your result. It's a beautiful sight to behold that you watch people who are gifted, who are skilled, who are great, but then their lives become so inspiring because they wrap that excellence with humility. This is a prayer that I keep praying for myself even to, till today. There are some prayers you will never graduate from praying. One of it is keep me humble, oh God. Keep me humble. Keep me humble. As men sing your praise, keep me humble. It's the same people who say shame on him. He has fallen. So when people are clapping for you, during your triumphant entry, I have taught you, beware. Most people are only clapping for themselves through you. Are we together? You want to last? You want to know why great men go down? I tell you the number one reason is pride. Pride pride that when you submit yourself to prayer and say Lord every time when men look at me may they see you yes they will acknowledge your hand upon my life but beyond me may they see you may they see your power and may they see your glory may they see your wisdom let it not be all about Joshua Selman let it not be all about koinonia and you see let me tell you the world that we live we live in now makes you look like a fool the moment you project Jesus beyond self they tell you you are a fool the way you gain influence is to shout it once people know and it's true in our world from a secular standpoint when you shout it whether it's true or not there is an attitude you give results that you seem to command respect. There are people who are not 10 years old in their impact, five years old in their impact. You celebrate them, you dance around their crowns, and in one year, two years, 10 years perhaps, they've gone. And they're still alive. It is not a good thing. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the 
the setting of the same. Yes, your name is to be hallowed. I'm never tired of sharing with you my experience. And the Lord told me very clearly, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. This is a condition. Can I tell you, seated here looking at me as sincere people who want to make it for some. Seated looking at me now as sincere people who have made it to a level. And I understand the pressure of wanting, you don't want people to downplay what you stand for. Because we live in a world where there are people who will see the results on your life and still downplay it. And I know sometimes it can be ego stinging. So the pressure to have to prove a point and slap it on people's face that, listen, don't look down on me. I am a millionaire. I am a billionaire. I'm an anointed person. I'm the CEO. But I'm telling you from the lens of wisdom, it is unnecessary. Your passion to remain must exceed your passion to be known. Your passion to remain, to last, must exceed your passion to be known. Write it down, please. Your passion to remain must exceed by far your passion to be known. If your passion to be known becomes greater than your passion to last, you will be known, but you will not last. Please, someone write this both in your heart and then on whatever writing material you're using. Your passion to last, your passion to remain, must by it must exceed by far your passion to be known. A man can be known and yet not last, but it is difficult to be long within a system and yet not known. Is someone learning? Why greatness is short-lived? Why glory suddenly turns to shame? Why longevity does not happen for many people? Reason number one, pride. What is the solution? In all your ways, acknowledge him. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, in all your results, acknowledge him. When self wants to use your results to promote, to shout it, remember that I am here because of him. The nations can think what they want to think. They can say what they want to say. But my knees will never be tired of going on the ground to say thank you. No matter how high you rise. Hallelujah. Every time I thank God for this ministry, I thank God for my life. I say it again and again. Lord, may I never become an idol to a generation such that they forget you to remember me. No. It's a bad bargain. Remember our discussion, previous discussions? i rather be forgotten, but if I can make Jesus known, honored, worshipped, respected, at the expense of my being known, it was a good bargain. And don't think I'm just talking because I'm here on stage preaching. No. Pride. Run away from pride. Run away from pride. If it is at work in your life right now, bind it. Cast it. Get it out of your destiny. And say in the name of Jesus, I desire to last. Make up your mind that I will not be the kind of person whose story will be used tomorrow to encourage someone to say, don't be like this person. Do you know it is better to never rise than to get to a point where your name is written as a memorial, a lesson to encourage people anytime they want to use somebody. Today, every time we talk about in the Bible, we want to warn young men to last. The individual we use is Samson. Do you know the many great things that Samson did? But simply because of the end of his life, Everybody forgets that he tore a lion, that he did all of these things. Can I tell you, when you go down, you will be surprised how people will forget all that you did when you were up. Hear what I'm telling you? When you go down, it doesn't matter what you were doing while you were up. It will take the mercy of God for men to remember your exploits when you are down. Ichabod. We are obtaining grace to last. Obtaining grace to remain. Number one, pride. Let's go to number two. Is God speaking to someone? The second reason why 
greatness is short-lived in the life of many is an arrival mentality arrival mentality the inability to continue learning the inability to continue improving first Corinthians 8 and verse 2 arrival mentality what is there to know again what is there to learn again what is there to pray about again I have received the highest award do you know that it is often said that for most graduates as soon as they graduate their mental capacity starts declining because the pressure to learn is no longer there and they literally stop growing mentally if any man think that he knoweth anything the Bible says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know you really know real champions because they always carry an unassuming personality ever open to learn the man is a professor but he's listening to you and even though what you are saying may not make sense he's still listening with an open heart one of the ways you know great people who will last is their passion to keep learning they learn from the great they learn from the small they learn from colleagues they learn from superiors. They learn from subordinates. They remain, they, they are students for life. The school of wisdom is a school where you never graduate. You are only admitted. The day you graduate, you graduate into failure. Arrival mentality. The level of light, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to excel in life and destiny. I submit to you by the integrity of scripture, there are very few people who have accessed that level of light. I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few people who have excelled notably in their fields of endeavor. And sometimes you will be amazed at the level of intellectual investment they have made and that they keep making. Whether it's in sports, whether it's in music, whether it's in ministry, you know, and so on and so forth. Sometimes when I'm studying, I get these very sincere text messages from people. Oh, Apostle, thank you for transforming us and doing this. And then I just look at it and, and I smile. I'm grateful on one hand. And then I just look at my Bible face forward and I continue reading. Because I have taught you, nobody claps for you twice for doing the same thing. Once you receive the applause, for a level of result, that is it. If you don't grow, you will not receive any applause again. Arrival mentality. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity. Once upon a time, owning a typewriter was a breakthrough. If you own a typewriter, it was proof that you had made it. But today you can pack typewriters and give someone and the person will insult you and return it back to you. How about Nokia 3310? If I package it and give it to you today, I say with love from me, you will accept I tell you it's a prophetic message that you will start hearing God. Otherwise, you most likely may be angry. Apostle, you mean, did I offend you? Why will you give me this? But once upon a time, it was a people stole to get it. People lied to get it. Yesterday's excellence will always be tomorrow's mediocrity or today's excellence, in fact. So you need to be careful that you got an award yesterday does not mean you will get an award tomorrow. Our world is full of people who live in there yesterday. Their arrival mentality kept them there while the world was moving forward. And when you talk, they start giving you stories of yesteryears. I once was the most brilliant person. Are you now? I once was the most intelligent person. Are you now? Those days, I was the one who interpreted for T.L. Osborne. What happened to you now? Celebrating yesterday at the expense of the impact and the exploits of today is a disaster. Your yesterday should never be better than your today if I give you stories only of yesterday as though God is not working today something is wrong the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday today 
and forever. If he did it yesterday, where did you keep him that your result is no longer happening again? I used to pray for the sick yesterday. Thank God, but what is happening now? There are still sick people today. I used to teach yesterday. Ah, Job said, oh, that I was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. Can I tell you, may you never lack testimonies that the only thing you have is yesterday's result. I'm saying it again. May you never lack testimonies that you cannot tell people what God is doing in and through your life today. The only thing you have to say are the things that happened yesterday. I was rich, I was anointed, I was blessed, I was serious. No. Arrival mentality. Champions never arrive. They are aware that there is always more. You see and know the character of a champion by their passion to know more. I am I'm passionate about knowing the things and the areas of my ignorance. And when I find an area that I don't know anything about, I don't spare. I don't pity myself because of fatigue. I must drive that ignorance as soon as possible. There is something we call in our world a local champion mentality. Have you heard that kind of thing? Where in a small group of mediocres, you are the highest, perhaps the wisest, perhaps the most enlightened and this cancer of local champion mentality has destroyed preachers destroyed business people destroyed great people arrival mentality oh turn to the book of this and the man is watching what i already know it i'm sure with this way he's going with this revelation he must talk about first call you just watch and see the person who is talking has never healed anybody. Nobody knows you. No influence, no power, no grace. You are failed in almost every area of your life. And mostly those who fail are the ones who are the commentators of destiny. They can comment. They can comment. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Have you seen a group of billionaires or millionaires sitting together? And with all due respect, someone who just shows up in their midst and sits down there and they are asking somebody a question that this our man has no idea about. And he will not let the people who have results answer. While they are talking, he said, no, well, eh, I don't agree with that exactly. What are you saying? What have you had? <laughs> you, you see how people disgrace themselves in destiny? People are talking about the anointing and someone who has no understanding of the dynamics of the anointing is editing and complaining and saying, well, it's not exactly like that. <laughs> and then those who really have the anointing are saying, okay, we're listening. And you are just saying rubbish and confusing yourself and making a fool out of your destiny. Then when it is time to make it happen, usually they step back. May you never be ashamed. Amen. Say amen. May you never be ashamed. Amen. I rebuke from your life an arrival mentality. Amen. Listen. Always have the heart of a learner. I'm teaching you how to last. Who would imagine that the word incarnate, the logos of God at age 12 will humble himself and go to the temple to learn what? From people he created and without him was not anything made that was made. But when he became a man by himself, he went to the temple I'm sure he would sit down there and then the Pharisees would be teaching him. There was this one that appeared to Moses and you'll be saying, wow, tell me more about it. So when the light appeared, he said, I am that I am. And the I am himself is listening and nodding his head. What humility is greater than that? If God can sit down to learn as a man, anybody that refuses to sit down and learn, you have pegged your potential for growth. Hallelujah. Champions learn. 
they learn all the time. They learn with their hearts opened. They learn with their hearts opened. You know that a man is going to last in life and destiny because of their passion to learn. Hallelujah. One day, someone gave me a book. Not not, I think maybe just, I don't know if it's a, I think it's some lady wrote one book and just put it as a gift among the gifts they gave me. And, and I opened it and looked at the book. And to be honest with you, it was something I didn't seem to pay attention to, but the topic caught my attention. And I just said, wow, this is interesting. Turned to the back, read about the person. And I just opened just one small chapter and read just one line. And I was so blessed, so blessed by what that lady, I just read that part alone and then I kept it, but I was blessed. I remember one time, I think I was looking for a particular, I was just researching on a particular topic, true story. And then I saw a, a video, maybe like five, 10 minutes on YouTube. I don't even know the person. And the entire, I'm not sure that it was up to maybe 30 or 40, what do you call that thing? Whether likes or follows. You know, the people listening to him. And then I listened to what the gentleman was saying. And my God, it was five minutes of profound wisdom. Yet nobody was listening. I said, this gentleman now may have known about me and never know that I am part of those who have benefited from him. I'm sure he'll be praying and say, oh God, let me meet this man one day. Not knowing that the man you are praying to meet, listen to your five minutes video and was blessed by it. Some of you will never admit it. That you are a big man and say, no, I learned from a little child. Ah, that is, a, that is a, an, a sting to your ego. You say, no, I received it from heaven. <laughs> what is there to say you just learned? Does it take away your anointing? Where did you learn how to cook this nice meal? You know, I have my thing with God. <laughs> Tell the truth. There is nothing to be embarrassed about, ladies and gentlemen. I went to someone's house and saw, you may say, I saw them cook rice in a way I've never known. I asked a polite question. They taught me, period. Glory be to God, honor to the saints. What is the lie about? An unnecessary expensive lie. Say amen. amen. Arrival mentality. You must fight it. You must fight it. It is the cancer of great men. It is easy to study when you have not become. It is easy to study when men do not know you. But when you get to a point where your results are clear and obvious, can you sit down and listen to someone you trained and learn from him? It is one of the biggest disaster of men of God. If I'm not preaching and I sit down, there are times I go to preach in meetings and perhaps there might be a number of preachers, some preaching before me and after me. If I have the time, it doesn't matter whether I train the person, whether we are colleagues, whether it's a father, it doesn't matter. Once the word of God is coming or any platform to dispense wisdom, I listen to it carefully. If there's nothing I can learn, glory be to God. At least I did not waste my time. Are we learning? An arrival mentality. When you find what you do not know, humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Humble yourself and learn. Reject an arrival mentality so that the word Ichabod would never be used over your life and your destiny. No. And I have taught you that everywhere you see greatness, respect it. When you see greatness, especially when you have access to it, respect it. If I have the honor of meeting any of our fathers of faith, the short time for discussion, that is not the time to start making any contributions. No. It doesn't mean I'm a dummy. There are things I know. But then I keep quiet because there are many things I do not know. And you use the opportunity and ask questions. Many of you would have been wiser if you did not waste your time. Have you seen people who come for counseling and for 15 minutes they are teaching you they sit down and say, well, I want to tell, there's a way God works with me. So here's how it works. Eh? Every time, January, February, he speaks to me. So God told me, and so you are, why are you here? You are wasting my time. You are wasting the time of other people. 
If you are not here to listen and learn, and meanwhile, while they are saying all that thing, you have x-rayed them by the Spirit. You have found them wanting on many grounds. And yet they will not listen. Then at the end, they say, well, I just felt it in my spirit. It always comes once in a while to agree with me. Agree with you, leave this place. You are not ready to receive. Not ready to receive. You are in trouble. You are owing. You are in debt. You are confused. You are oppressed and you are saying agree with you. What is there to agree about? Koinoni, are you learning? Arrival mentality. Always give yourself to continuous learning. First Timothy chapter 4, 15 and 16. First Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Meditate upon these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly, not half-heartedly, wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear unto all. Verse 16. Take heed unto yourself and to doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save both yourself and them that hear you. May I never get to a point as a man of God where I feel I've arrived. I've known all the mysteries. I've known everything it takes. No. The victor's path, the champion's path, is the path of continuous learning. Don't just learn from fathers. Don't just learn from contemporaries. Also learn when it has to do with knowledge. Nobody has monopoly of it. Did you hear what I'm saying? Nobody has monopoly of knowledge. There are things only fathers can teach. There are things it is those under you. One day you will be listening to a, a program, something from someone, perhaps someone you raised, and you will hear the person communicate a dimension of truth in an interesting way. And that becomes what ushers you to study. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three. Why is greatness short-lived? Why is there no longevity of impact in the life of many? Are you ready for number three? Distractions and compromises. Distractions and compromises. Galatians 5, 7 to 9. Distractions. Ye did run well. Galatians 5, 7. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Ye did run well. It's a question. He's saying you started well. What happened now that has hindered you from remaining? Verse 8. It says, this persuasion cometh not from him who calls you. That means you have something has happened to you. This is not how you started. You have exposed yourself to another influence. The last verse. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Do you know what he's saying? The character of Satan is that all he needs is to introduce something small. The leaven, what do they call leaven in our day's day? Yeast. Thank you. You don't put the yeast the same size as the flour. But you just put it as little as it is and watch the wonder it will cause the entire dough to rise. That's what he's saying there. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Distractions. Philippians chapter 3, please. 13 to 15. Brethren, Paul is speaking. I count myself, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, hallelujah, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. 14. I press. Someone say, I press. Let your destiny hear you. Say, I press. I press towards the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 15. Let us therefore, he says, as many as are matured, be thus minded. You must have a mentality that you must press. No distraction. There are two dimensions to distractions. Number one, getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace is why great people go down. The first part of distraction is getting into areas 
beyond the scope of your grace. Ephesians 4 verse 7, a painful lesson in that area was learned in the life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was not a marriage counselor. He did not even marry himself. Instead of him to keep quiet, he had served God faithfully. The greatest of all prophets, provided he was within the area of his grace, no power could touch him. But when he veered off and now started talking about matters beyond the scope of his grace, his head went for it. The Bible says, but unto every one of us, listen, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. There are men of God, there are business people, there are great people today whose downfall started, not necessarily because of anything they did wrong, but they veered off and began to communicate along areas where grace was not given. Are we together? Yeah. This is very important. Distraction. So God gives people mandates. I'm not just talking in ministry. God gives people assignments. And chances are excellent. You see, the deception of greatness is because once grace is on you, whatever you are doing becomes so easy. You will think every other area will be like that. It is the grace of God on you that makes what you are doing easy. And then chances are excellent that people will now veer off into other areas where grace was not supplied. And they want to command the same authority. That's what gets them into trouble. There are people who have no business doing detailed teachings on finances. They don't have the grace. They could share it generally or learn from those who really have it. There are people who understand very little, perhaps about the dynamics of prayer. One of the, the major trouble in the body of Christ today is because everybody believes he has authority to teach on everything. So people stand, I can teach excellently well in an area and you will be surprised at the rubbish I will teach in another area. The ability to discern your area of grace and stay there with all humility. It profits you and then it profits the body. Are we together? No matter how much I teach on relationship and family and whatever, I will never understand marriage and relationship like a woman like mommy um, Funke Adejimo and then my dear friend and brother Pastor Kingsley and his wife. It's a grace God gave them. By the time you now feel I can do it, I can do all things. You see, that statement is within the will of God. Are, are, are we learning now? Most times, that calamity graduates from pride. It starts from pride, and then we delve into areas, and we claim to be authorities in areas, and we come up with misleading information. When you function within the area of grace, the grace given to you insists that you remain accurate within that area. Hallelujah. <laughs> there are people who get up and make expensive risks in their lives that ruin their ministries. They just get up and produce posters, healing meetings. They go online and copy the poster that Benny Hinn used to advertise his, his meeting. Healing meeting. Expect this and that. And they stand and shout and vow if anybody lives here sick, Except I'm not a man of God. And the sick people say, wow, this is wonderful. We're in a good place then. At the end of the grace, after praying, for, if you are healed, come out. Nobody comes out. You sing praise and worship. I mean, just check. Nobody, should they lie? They were not healed. If you are learning, that's all right. If you are starting. But where you claim to be an authority in healing and power. No, sir. No, sir. It's not there. Period. Are we together? Hmm. Many people claim things they don't have grace to defend. Distractions. Can I tell you? Be comfortable where God has kept you and serve with excellence. Never be intimidated. You are only a king within your kingdom. Don't enter another person's kingdom and fight the throne. No. In your kingdom, there is a throne for you. There is a seat for you. There is a crown for you. There is a scepter for you. Remain there. 
and then respect other kingdoms that you do not have access to. Hallelujah. A gentleman with, with now just, just jokingly, I believe a nice young gentleman, he sent me a text and said, Apostle, I want you to impart grace upon me. I, want, I was wondering, how does that happen? He said, I want to be able to raise a song and sing. And I said, my, you know, I, I, I think I just re replied him a scripture, let every man abide in his calling. I said, this guy is going to frustrate himself now. You will write a number of songs and not know which one to raise because it's not about having songs. This thing is of the spirit. There is a grace. There are people who try to sing and you know you're saying, what, why now? You would have just done whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. And then there are many, many worshipers who now try to preach too. And they sing beautifully and then they say, okay, let me share something. And you're like, ah, why did you do that? You would have just stayed where God called you. Why did you now scatter everything again? This thing is about grace. Oh, if it is not on this, your head is not there. It's as simple as that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Distraction. So the first area of distraction is not, is getting into areas beyond the scope of your grace. You must be careful. God never sends a man to do everything. God never empowers a man to do everything. There is what men like Watchman Nee will call the limitation of the body. Your heart is responsible for pumping blood, but your heart is not your brain. You can have a healthy heart and have something called brain damage. You will see, act like a fool, even though your heart is empty. Am I right on that? Your heart may have a problem and your brain is still working well. You will not even just act like a fool. You will die immediately. So the various parts of your body have their function. And the reason why the whole organism functions well is because the parts of the body limit themselves. If I need to pick something by mistake, I'm, you know, I'm, my hands are full, I may use my mouth to hold the phone, but the mouth is not designed to carry things. There are times you may need to veer off temporarily because of something you need to do. But the hand is at its best when it is reaching and holding, not walking. If you use the hand to walk, you will frustrate the hand. It was not built to walk. It was built to reach. It was built to hold. Are we together? The second area of distraction and compromises is not protecting your focus or your pursuit. So we're discussing the third reason why people's greatness is short-lived. Distraction and compromises. The A part is getting into areas beyond the current scope of your grace. And then number two, not protecting our focus and pursuits. Acts chapter 6 please from verse 1. If you do not create systems and structures to protect your focus, eventually you will find out that you are doing many things. There are people who are doing many things in ministry, in business, in career, in destiny, and they are honestly not making any progress. As we say, jack of all trades, master of none. Acts 6 verse 1. In those days, watch this now, when the number of the disciples was multiplied. So this problem came as a result of increase, multiplication. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples and said unto them, It is not reason that we should leave. Watch this. Leave the word of God and serve tables. Those are two kinds of ministries. Serving table is not a lesser ministry. The apostles were given the ministry of the word and prayer. And now, because an issue came as a result of the increase, they came and met them and said, listen, come and discuss this issue. Some women have been neglected. There is tribalism going on here. There is all kinds of things going on here. And the apostle said, no. Verse, verse 2 now or 3. We should leave. We shouldn't leave the walk. Don't distract our focus. He says, wherefore. These are the apostles. They were secured enough to say, listen, it's not incompetence. It's that if we find ourselves in an area where grace was not given, 
we will be distracted and majors will become minors and minors will become majors. It says, wherefore, brethren, look ye among you, seven men, full of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But as for us, verse 4, we will give ourselves continually. Say continually. Say continually. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. I like this. Very inspiring. I submit to you with every sense of humility. There are many people, many men of God especially, their trouble started when the church expanded too much. They stopped being preachers and became administrators. Because now, millions and billions are coming into the account. Now, um, international guests are flying from all over. And now, sometimes, we men of God can be so insecure, we don't trust anybody. And we feel, I have to supervise this finance by myself. How much entered there? And before you know it, it's Sunday again. And you come to preach and say, let's just sing whatever comes from God. And you find out you are leaving your assignment because you are attending to things that are not within your area of call. Just because you are heading a vision does not mean you are the one who knows everything. You must know your area of grace and give people within the vision room under your supervision to bring out their best. Are we together? There are certain roles in this ministry. If I were the one playing it, I probably would have produced a disaster out of it. Koinonia is not excelling today just because Joshua Selman is a visionary person. It is a composite of many people's intelligence together. Are you getting the point now? Yes, it is true. And if you cannot understand and accept this, you would destroy your organization. It's why most organizations don't last. There are people who set up businesses and allow intelligent people to come and run it. They own the business, but they don't lead the business. They are humble enough to be advised, to be counseled as to how the business should go. But there are people who will sit down and die there and say, no, it is my work God gave me. And before you know it, the vision is not going well because they want to do everything. Imagine if I'm the one who is decorating this stage for you. <laughs> I know you like me because you are hearing me preach. It's because I'm staying in my area of grace. Give me the assignment of fixing this flower and you'll be surprised. My first question is, is it necessary? <laughs> are you in church to see flowers? You see my mindset? So I will remove everything now and say you are not serious. Or I'll tell somebody, put the picture of one big Bible, open it to maybe Psalm 1, leave it there every Sunday. That's what you will see. Because my passion is to make sure you receive the word. What is my business with the flower or the color? No. Put, get this, you know this kind of Bible that looks like cake? This big Bible. Psalm 1. As you enter every Sunday, you will keep seeing it. You love the word, but you are tired of the atmosphere. No creativity. So you step out of the way and allow those God granted grace to do that work. This is why you are celebrating what you are saying today. Are we together? You are a great leader here. Can I tell you? Begin to examine the core area of your call and start raising people who function in every other area that is not around your core assignment so that your life becomes efficient. Efficient. Moses was about to kill himself until God gave him a strategy. This guy was counseling people from morning till night. Moses would have died a natural, he would have just died like that and God told him, no, 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 no. Jethro, his father-in-law, gave him a counsel and said, no, go and appoint people. Set up a structure. There are major issues that are your business. Train other people. Listen, as a leader, if you are not training people, you are destroying your future. You can't know too much to not need people. You will always need people for as long as you are alive and for as long as your destiny is alive. Distractions and compromises. 
Create structures, create systems that protect your focus. Hallelujah. Create structures. With all due respect, and this is my personal opinion, I don't think a man of God who is really called into ministry should have all the time every, to be everywhere doing everything. You are in every club, you are in every group. You go and watch football on, on Saturday and then on Sunday morning, quickly before you run to church. And then after that, you are doing this one, you are, you are distracted by so many things. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. It's always said there are those who watch movies, but there are those who are the movie themselves that are being watched. Hallelujah. Many people are busy doing so many things. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> many, many years ago, let me tell you something, it may make you laugh. Somebody was organizing his wedding and he sent me a text that would I mind being his, um, what's that man that stands near? I said, are you okay? My friend, go and look for people. I can pray for you. I can so go and do your thing. He said, will I mind? It's not pride. I just told him, I said, no, 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 no. no. There is an honor that priesthood carries. You think whatever you want to think. It's just the truth. Are we together? Yes. If you see me stand by a junction to your house, prizing hot corn, by myself and say, Madam, I'm arguing and I'm touching the thing, I'm cleaning. And I say, Abba, this and that. I know you will just laugh, but something will affect you. You will just say, No, it's unnecessary. Not at this level. There are some things that are not pride. It's wisdom to protect your focus. Are we together now? Yes. There are people who God has lifted, but they will go for weddings and you see them dragging souvenir, dragging rice. Saying, I have four children, you gave me two. Come on, come on. Man that is in honor and does not know it will perish is like a beast that perisheth. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to protect my focus. There are a few times by the grace of God that you will see me come here. I think it's only maybe once, twice. Usually it's during the graduation of the School of Ministry students. I don't come here to come and check. Have they said the sound well? No. If we're starting ministry, that's fine. But at this level, systems have been created. There are great, loyal, faithful, and gifted people that God has brought in this ministry. And I allow them to do their work while I settle down to bring you the word. Are we together now? Yes. That's why when I come, I sit down quietly. As they are taking the testimonies, I sit down quietly and, and receive. As my precious worship team people are leading worship, I sit down and allow them. Mine is to create the, the, a template for them and it's the assignment to stay with God. Imagine if I was the one giving them songs every week. You will soon be tired. You will know I'm the one giving the songs. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're enjoying their creativity because we give them that autonomy to stay with God. Yours is to teach them to be spiritual and how to receive. Hallelujah. Protect your focus. There are levels in life where not... And I'm saying it to... Down to many, there are certain things at your level. If God has honestly lifted you, they will become distractions. Like washing your car by yourself. You would think it's humility, but there is a way if God has lifted you. That two hours to wash your car or three hours to wash your clothes. You are blessed. Look for somebody, employ somebody, take it to a dry cleaner and have the time to pray and focus on what you should do. It's as simple as that. There are things in my life I will never do again. I can do them, but I will not do them. It's a distraction. Don't copy me if you are starting. I wash my clothes, so... I did everything by myself before I started. I'm bringing this balance because sometimes people hear all kinds of things in church. Someone will now go and say, you know what? I've made up my mind. And then before you know it, in one month, especially in this our lovely Abuja, your whole money will go into dry cleaning. If you are learning, say amen. amen. Listen. 
Become comfortable with greatness and create a system to protect it without feeling bad. Are we together? Yes. Great people last because they unclutter their lives. They remove things that are unnecessary and settle with the things that are necessary. Necessary. As busy as I am, I'm busy doing few things that are very necessary and very required. And if you are a good and nice and kind person, God will always send people who help you. Their assignment is to protect your focus and to make your life easier. That's why it's good to be kind and loving. You will always find available people, people you do not even have to pay, on their own and by themselves, they will be glad to serve. Number four, let's hurry up. Is someone learning? So number one, why greatness is short-lived is pride. Number two, arrival mentality. Number three, distractions and compromises. And then number four, are you ready? The fourth reason why many great people fall from grace to grass, I put here, violating your winning strategy. Violating your winning strategy is the reason why great people fail violating your winning strategy either the strategy God gave you or the strategy that was built after years of discipline sacrifice and investment show me a man who violates your winning strategy you will not last again this is true for ministry this is true for business this is true for every area in life violating your winning strategy either divinely inspired strategy or strategy that is a composite of many years of pain, sacrifice, and wisdom. Can I tell you this? Listen, exploits and victory is always strategy dependent. Exploits and victory is always strategy dependent. See every home that is excelling today. Wonderful children, great spouse, there is a strategy. The moment they begin to violate the strategy, there will be a problem. See a student who is excelling academically, returning back with great results. There is a strategy that keeps them producing that result. Are we together? See a bank, a restaurant, even a church, in business, we call it quality control systems so that you do not veer off to maintain excellence, to maintain delivery. Hallelujah. The question God is asking somebody now is have you kept your winning strategy? When God calls a man into ministry, there is a strategy God. You remember what I taught you? That it is the will of God plus the strategy to bring that will to pass that is equal to victory. If the only thing you have is the will of God and you do not have a strategy given by God, the way that we run Koinonia is a strategy God gave. It's not something that was just invented. But there are aspects of running this ministry for instance that is a product of gleaning from the mind of intelligent people who have built organizations that have lasted no system fails when they respect their winning strategy leaders let me teach you this beware of people who come into your vision with their own strategy no if it is goliath you want to bring down don't assume he will fall by despair Goliath is a warrior too. You need to stay with God. If it's Jericho you want to bring down, you need to get the strategy from God. And can I tell you, when God gives you a strategy, even when you want to change it, consult him. There is no major decision that happens in this ministry, no matter how intelligent it is, that I will not pray about. After all the data and everything is brought, okay, beautiful, just give me some time. I have to go to God. Father, this is your vision. This is your work. This is what we have. What do you have to say about it? 
if God is silent, I keep quiet until the day he speaks. Is someone learning now? Don't just celebrate success within your organization. Teach everybody who is part of your organization. Your organization can mean your home. It can mean your church. Teach them why you win. Don't just allow them enjoy that you are winning. Please hear me. Teach your children why you win. Teach them why there is always money in that house. Teach them why the presence of God is always mighty in that house. Don't just allow people come and enjoy success and leave. Teach them why do we win in this ministry? Why do we win in this business? Why has God so elevated this vision? If you teach them, they will preserve it. If you don't, they will lose it. Especially when you are not there. Are we together? So you have children. Listen to my message, redefining inheritance. There are many children whose parents only made them enjoy success. They did not teach them the winning strategy. What did daddy do to become so wealthy? Even though he was not an educated man. Ah, he was a man who understood honor. Now you are giving your son all the millions and billions and not teaching him the law of honor. He will soon lose it. I told you that one of the major inheritance that parents give children is their mindset. The first thing to transfer is not money. Transfer your conviction. Violating their winning strategy. Every time we have our workers retreat in this ministry, among the many things we seek to do is to bring a, a, new, a renewed orientation. Why has God lifted us this way? Why has God lifted his name in and through our lives this way? And then you help the people. Listen, let me give you a secret. Whether it's in church, whether it's in whatever it is, no matter how gifted people are, if they come to join your vision, let them learn why you win. Don't just absorb people to come with their ideas. If they are not humble to learn why you win, then they can enjoy it from afar. But they should not come and destroy what you are doing. This is what is called the doctrine of Balaam. He makes the presence of God fight you by doing something that compromises on your winning strategy. Let me show you one scripture. Perhaps God is speaking to someone. If the glory that was once upon your life has departed, go back and check. There was something God gave you as a unique formula for your victory. Man of God, there was something God gave you you see Baba Deboye today in his old age. When he stands, no matter what stage he gets to, he must go down on his knees. It's not a ritual. It's a strategy. It may not apply to you, but it's his way of demonstrating before the nations that God sent me. I am not God myself. He will fly across the globe and you will still see him hold his instrument of worship. And he will kneel down, raise a song or two, worship his God and stand up and teach and you will see that even in old age he's fat and flourishing spreading across the globe and another ignorant young man you, there are people who have different there are others as soon as they come they turn to the back of their seats and kneel down and pray it's not a ritual there are strategies that God gives people there are things I do before the miracle service there are things I do before every service there are unique covenants that I have with God the moment you forget what keeps power on your head, Samson, the secret to your strength is your hair. Are we together? David, the secret to your strength is your worship. This is important. It is not enough to understand the anointing God has given you. Understand what keeps it. Understand what builds it. businessman there are people who have become billionaires today not because of some intelligence necessarily but God gave them a secret every time they are about to go and bid for a contract they may take a day they will fast they will roll they will speak sing worship others will just meet a man of God who speaks to them that is their winning strategy it's not a strategy for everybody 
ladies and gentlemen hear me if you see men go from grace to grass they have violated the strategy God gave them to win there is what we are doing as a ministry to the glory of God that keeps this ministry rising you see and for as long as we walk in keeping with it for as long as we walk in keeping with it there is no power in existence even if it's after 30 years that will bring this vision down let me show you a scripture second chronicles 15 we'll read from verse 12 to 15 is god helping someone and they entered into a covenant watch this they entered into what a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. 13. That whatsoever, whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. It was beyond a desire. It was a covenant. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And the Bible says he was found of them. What was the result? And the Lord gave them rest round about. I think it was God's servant Bishop Oedipo who said, when Covenant University started, on the day that they were going to do the commissioning, the dedication, that the Lord told him to lie down flat on the ground and hand over that meeting. With all due respect, I will tell you something. When we were preparing for the Manchester conference, usually we hold a meeting with the workers before the main meeting starts. One of the things we did was as a workforce, all of us got down on our knees and we handed over the conference to God. You are the only one who can change the heart of men. You are the only one who can heal. You are the only one who can deliver. It's a strategy God gave. In all your ways, acknowledge him. So you will see an ordinary mother. She may not have everything, but she has a covenant with God. God will tell her, Mama, pray from 12 to 2 every day without fail. That is your secret for as long as you do this you will never beg the woman may not know much but once it's 12 on the dot mama may be tired but she remembers that there is a winning strategy and she's praying she's done that for 10 years 20 years one day her once forgotten son now becomes a captain in industry and even when people take his name to herbalist the herbalist will say you brought a wrong person and one day the mother will say, come my son, do you know why you are this great? Oh, I just returned from Harvard. Nonsense. Come, let me show you something. When you were born, God told me you will be great. And God said to make that prophecy come to pass. There are families, their, their winning strategy is that they covenanted with God that any missionary that comes around any area, maybe their village, they must provide a room. Have you seen that kind of thing? Some of your parents did it. And you may not know why the children today, regardless how stubborn they are, God still blesses them. God is a covenant keeping God. Oh, let me tell you the truth. Hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Fine. The day I stop men from seeing the Lord, it's not that he will judge me. It is that the covenant itself was designed to bring you down. So if I see people boasting and bragging, it's none of my business. I know what protects the oil on my head. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Not every preacher may be comfortable talking like me and being so vulnerable like me. And I respect it. I don't know what covenant God gave them. But as for me, the nations must see Jesus through my life and I'm not ashamed. It has nothing to do with my reputation or my ego. The results show that I'm not a fool for allowing the nation see Jesus. Is someone learning? I remember one great businessman, a billionaire businessman 
we had the privilege of ministering in a conference together and then he was talking and we had an opportunity to just share and he was telling me he said listen there's a sacrifice there are things i do with god that translates to the things you see including unbelievers they have covenants that they keep do you know that every time you see greatness somebody is doing something somewhere that is not normal that is not natural hallelujah with all due respect i will tell you and i'm saying it sincerely I, I say it with every sense of humility. One of the secrets behind the mysterious blessing of God upon this ministry was a sacrifice, something that happened years ago. The Lord gave me an instruction. Didn't have much. He said to empty the account of this ministry. Zero, zero naira. When that happened, of course it was a test. It didn't reach seven days. And God came through in a way and he had vowed that forever this ministry will never beg. It's the truth. It's the truth. Hallelujah. So there are people who do not behind, please, if there is anything you must learn today, behind every sustainable result, there are winning strategies. Don't think people just excel like that. No. 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 With all due respect, I will tell you, every time I have had the honor of meeting our Father in the Lord, that the Geo, whether in his office here, whether wherever, I have almost always met him praying. Always met him praying. He will sit down as old as that man is. You will think he's weak and tired. Service is going on and he's in his office praying. Praying in tongues for a long time. And afterwards he gets up. And it's ready to come out one declaration there is somebody here this and that and people say amen and you see people return with children as if they stole them and you'll be wondering thinking what happened can i tell you sincerely god honors covenants hallelujah i remember the time i emptied my account like empty everything because i love the lord I said, Lord, this is for you. No coercion, no manipulation. There is nothing that you give me that I will not give you. Don't just covet people's results. There are winning strategies. And if God tells you, please make sure you keep it. How can a global ministry like this be going on break? Can you imagine? Right now, after the second week of December or thereabout, we're having the last koinonia service and that's it go on break till january what if you don't come back <laughs> i'm just saying it is suicidal from from an honest standpoint no man of god does that kind of thing that god has helped you now you want to create sorrow for yourself again but if it's a strategy he gave until he changes it it will not stop how can a ministry this size and has never held this convention with literally millions of followers across the globe? You must be a madman to not do that. But that is the foolishness of obedience. Listen, I'm speaking to someone. You started a business with God and you vowed before God, prosper me. 50% goes for me, 50% goes for the ministry. You did it the first year, you became a billionaire immediately. Now when the Holy Spirit comes, mm, don't disturb me. When I said that, Nigeria was all right. Okay. And you see, God respects you. He will respect you even at the expense of your rising. Please go back and find out what is the secret behind any result you are seeing today. If it was prayer, keep praying. If it was fasting, keep fasting. Are we together? violating their winning strategies there are things koinonia will always do there are things koinonia will never do never never when we were having the conference let me make reference to it again you can imagine such size of people and god comes to me while praying and he says i want to make a statement there is a, a negative narrative that they've had about the church i want to correct that statement and because of that, number one, you will not collect offering nor mention money. 
all through the course of that conference. How do you pay the bills? You have no idea, ladies and gentlemen, how much was spent for that conference. You are wise. You use your mind. And then a workforce of over 2,000 people, you are to feed them also. Bless the people, return back. No talk of money, no nothing. Yes, sir. It is your work. This is the strategy. It was the violation of strategy that eventually led to the defeat of Israel, the death of Hophni and Phinehas. You know that now? A strategy was given to them to not choose, just to use the frog and whatever meat comes out, they should take it with contentment. But the children said, no, no way. They will use their, the thing and push and look for something that is, is sumptuous. And God was saying, I'm warning you now. They kept bringing the thing out till they went to die. And their father saw them. They were violating strategies, but because of his heart. Don't love people too much to leave them die. There are times that your compassion can be used by the devil to destroy people. You know how God helped you to stand when the people, especially the people around you, if they are violating the spiritual secrets that make for strength, love them, but correct them in love. That was the mistake of Eli. There would never have been a mention of Ichabod. He would have called those boys to say, listen, my dear sons, I'm a judge in Israel now for 30-something years, getting to 40. My secret with God was A, B, C, D. Why did God jump Eli's sons and went to Samuel? Because I'm sure God gave them a grace period and saw that these boys were not interested in repentance, conversion, nor his program. If you never believe that God collects the bishopric of people, you have not read your Bible well. Just because God used you yesterday, man of God, it doesn't mean he will use you tomorrow. No. Hallelujah. Your winning strategy. For someone, your life was built on sacrifice. Don't stop it. Because you have now become great. Don't stop it. Your life was built on prayer. Your life was built on the word. There are some of you, you have a covenant with God. Every time it is two or three days to your birthday, you go for a retreat. Now that you are a big man, make sure people do not distract you. When it's your birthday, they will say, um, they slaughtered chicken or cow. Will you die if you don't eat it? They should eat it on your behalf with love. After you meet with God, or they should, re they should refrigerate it for you. You will eat it after the retreat. You go back to your God and your maker. Lord, I am here again. I started meeting with you when I was 18 years. I am now 50 years. And God will say, you are still coming. Yes, sir. I'm still here. I have given you global visibility. You are still here. Yes, sir. And God says, let's go to the next level. Listen to me. If you don't keep this principle, there are consecrations and covenants that protect anointings and protect impact. Every time you see glory turning to shame, somebody has left his covenant with God and men can distract you. You can forget your winning formula. John G. Lake was crying, A. A. Allen, amen, was crying for the healing anointing. He said, God, how, what does it take to carry the healing anointing? He went inside the room. He looked at his wife and said, Honey, you will not see me again for the next one week. Don't feel bad. I, I will not come out until God speaks to me. He entered and shut the door and prayed and cried. And God gave him seven secrets. He said, If you keep these secrets, there is no sickness you will not heal. He came out rejoicing and told his wife, I found it. When you see men do the things that they do, I remember, truthfully speaking, those days when I would see men of God, park stadiums, park meetings, it, it looked to me as if, I said, how, do, it, how do these guys get people to even hear them? I mean, in my naive, do, is it publicity they use? What does it take for people to come and crowd themselves like this? Abba! Until I found out that the secret behind every glory bar 
are many covenants and many consecrations there is someone God is calling you today and saying there was something you did that you never lacked anytime your money is about to finish God will wake somebody but now you are literally begging you are a shadow of your yesterday return back to your covenants there is a winning secret God gave you I'm telling you this as a prophetic word God is saying return back return back to the covenants there are people who were once powerful they are no longer powerful no zero power it's gone worship people some of you the secret behind your receiving songs was to lock yourself at least a few minutes a few hours in a week that's your time with god you carry your keyboard or your your guitar and you lie down before the lord and cry make sure as god lifts you you don't just say i'm a popular person you will write a song that is so nice and nobody will listen to it because the presence factor is missing who am i speaking to someone needs to repent god is showing you this is why your glory has gone down this is why your glory has gone down this is why the glory of your ministry has gone down this is why your impact has gone down once the presence factor is missing once the winning formula is missing there are things you must keep doing to keep seeing the glory there are things you must keep doing to keep seeing the glory hallelujah at the beginning of every year without fail there are things I do there are things I do by the spirit there are things I do by the spirit maybe there are only a few times I enter every new year from an old year praying in tongues is tongues that transits from 12 to that new year there are if for any reason I have missed it maybe it's not once maybe I was in a meeting until the next year came new year 31st to first no you can't be playing as soon as that year lands I'm commanding January already I'm commanding February because in this ministry by 6 31st of December 6 p.m. on the dot West African time the prophetic word for the next year comes so once we go on break as we are enjoying break me I'm not doing break I'm waiting before God to say what is the the, the, the leading for the next year and before the 30th or 28th to 30th, there must be. Now, there are people who don't believe in prophetic words. That's all right. I respect whatever revelation. But this is how God has guided us. When he said it was a year of open doors this year, we believed him. And the results have spoken for themselves. Hallelujah. It's in this kind of atmosphere. I lie down in his presence. Shabakatabata. Lord, there are millions of people depending on this direction. What are you saying, oh God? What are you saying, oh God? Turn the plates upside down. You are signing your register for the relevance of the next season. Just because you are relevant now, I tell you, believe this, does not mean you will remain relevant. I have seen people with all humility rise at the cutting edge of ministry, at the cutting edge of business. You would never imagine, with all due respect, there are musicians today, worshippers today. You almost don't know where they are again. Please, everybody go back and ask the Lord, what is the secret behind the glory that you have placed on my life? There are many men of God here. Don't just be allowing people clap for you and say, ah, you are a powerful man of God. You are joking. You are just two years in ministry and you are bragging. You don't know the challenges and the, and the mountains 
Even those who are standing, they were shaken. Talk less of you that is already shaking without a wind. Take away that pride and sit down and say, Lord, what is the formula you are giving me? There is a covenant I have with God. It is impossible for me to lack what to preach on Sunday. It's not just because of study. I tell you this. It is a covenant with God. There are things I do with God. What he wants the people to hear on Sunday must be there on time. If you think it is easy, go and be preparing six messages every week. You will be tired one day. You will preach everything you know and you will be tired. But not when you are standing on this. I have a covenant with God. Provided I am standing doing ministry, I will never ever break down. Maybe when I am done, I can sit down and rest. But when that anointing is on me, I can stand and preach till the next day. If I were pretending this bar, I would have died by now. Believe me. When you see extraordinary results, I'm teaching you something. There is a covenant with God that this ministry will never beg and never borrow till Jesus comes. This is not about prosperity. Oh, this. No, 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 no. Is someone learning? In one minute, I'd like you to raise a cry from heaven and say, Father, grace upon my life. Where have I thrown away my winning formula? You gave it to me in the secret. This is what made me a millionaire. You gave it to me in the secret and I conquered the financial realm. Right now, my world is shaking. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Shake Parakosiata. Where you have violated your winning strategy. Behind the exploits of men in the spirit. Behind the exploits of men in destiny. There are secrets. There are covenants. Take a minute to pray. Skata prakata balakata bos. Skada balanta paka so prakata balakosiata. For in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Never forget this secret. If you do not want to answer the name Ikabod in your lifetime, find out the secrets behind your glory. And protect it. Sit down. Number five. Are you ready? Hmm. I sense that there's going to be a mighty impartation. I tell you, God is God is shaking someone from the core of your spirit. There is a man of God. You came here to hear this thing. This thing I just said. God is telling you this is it. I've answered you. I've answered you already. I've answered you. This is what you left and with it the glory went. This is it. Le Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. And the Lord said unto Moses, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. You want to see the power of God? You want to walk in signs and wonders? No. There are things if you do not understand, it will remain like a movie. This thing is not magic. Not everybody is fake. No. Hallelujah. Number five, let's hurry up. These two points, there are two points remaining. And please, I want you to pay attention, especially for those watching online. I want you to listen right now. If you think the fourth point was powerful, wait till you hear what I'm about to say. Number five, 
The fifth reason why greatness is short-lived and why people's glory turns to shame is called unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. If you can't spell it, ask your neighbor. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. Let me not forget, Lord, your benefits. I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Write it and please listen. If you are a great man here, whether you are in ministry especially, please, I want you to listen to me. I have something to tell you. Unaddressed weaknesses and vulnerabilities. I preached a message many years ago while revivals die. I'm a student of revivals. I'm a student of awakenings. I have studied revivals across continents. I have had the honor of meeting a few people who spearheaded prophetic moves of God. And I began a study first for myself and then as a contribution to the body of Christ. Why do revivals die without achieving their purpose? Why do we have mighty moves of God? And then eventually everything goes down. And at the end of my research, I found only one reason why revivals die. It's called the humanity of men. The fact that the vessels that spearhead that revival are humans, it is the reason why the revival dies. Listen to this. I heard a man of God say this years ago, that any weakness unaddressed will eventually destroy you. It is not weaknesses and vulnerabilities that destroy men. It is weaknesses and vulnerabilities that are unaddressed. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? Every man born of a woman has weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities means there are things you are easily given to. And it does not necessarily have to be sinful. It's just that it can be used against you. Are we together? Yes. There are many, many people, their own vulnerability is lost. Now, it has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. Lost. Women, men, or both. Lost. There are people who don't have that weakness, but money, they can pray in tongues from morning till night, but let them hear the sound of money. And the old man has come alive. You will thank me for what you are hearing. There are people... Their weakness is anger and offense. If the devil wants to destroy them, one thing triggers anger and offense. They can boil even as men of God. They can boil even as whatever it is. And as I'm praying, any spirit of anger here that has trapped anyone's life, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I call that spirit by name and I command it to leave you now. Listen, our miracle service has started though. This one is, is not till next week again. Sit down. Listen, there are people, their weakness is an increase. What did I write here? Their weakness is an obsession for recognition. It's a weakness. An obsession. Even if it's the devil that calls their name and ushers them, they are happy. It's a weakness. Listen to me. Do you know how the spirit of seduction works? The character of seduction is that 
that temptation has no power over you until it can connect with something that is already within you. If Jesus is not hungry, telling him turn these stones to bread will be a useless temptation because it, there is nothing within him that can relate to that. Are we together now? One of the ways that spirits manipulate men, watch this. One of the ways that people become victims of spirits is they are called trigger points in the spirit. So when the devil wants to come into a family, they study the couple or they study the children. What is the weakness that becomes a gateway into this family? If it is lost, they will position a way of entering it. If it's money, they will do something to crash the finances so that in that state of desperation, you see that? If it's obsession for recognition, Satan will make the husband to dishonor the wife, the wife to dishonor the husband or the children. All this joining of heads you see in homes is the devil. Oh, he's only looking for an entrance point. Please listen to me. Weaknesses and vulnerabilities don't care whether you're a man of God. Don't care whether you're a businessman. Don't care whether you're a child. Don't care whether you are educated. If you become honest with yourself and deal with them, you have found your key to remaining. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Watch this. Let us lay aside every what? And the sin. That means not everything that this sin is not the only thing that destroys you. For those who think it's only sin, no, there are weights, weaknesses, vulnerabilities. There are people because of your obsession for for money, the devil can program somebody who is very rich but devilish. That's how you see people destroying the glory of people. Because they are so, they have a weakness. And do you know what? Weaknesses and vulnerabilities do not necessarily have to bring any profit for you before you pursue them. There are people today who drink and it's not that it brings any satisfaction. It's that they just found themselves bound by it. You don't like what I'm saying? Listen, no. Weaknesses and vulnerability among the many things you must know about yourself is what can bring you down so that it becomes your prayer point did you hear what i said you must find out what can bring you down and start crying before the lord roll like a madman and say lord help me before i destroy my destiny there are people today the cancer that can bring them down is offense so every time the devil wants to cause problem, he will make them to not be recognized in a place or create something. And they say, me, me, politicians. That's how they get into trouble. Hallelujah. One of the biggest deception of Satan is this false idea of holiness where people actually believe that because they've not gotten into any trouble, they are free moral trouble economic trouble and when it has to do with weaknesses bar nobody has the right to point hands at everybody everybody lies down before god you would have looked at the young boy david in that boy was a murderer would you have believed that in that fine young man ladies that's the kind of man you would have want to marry yet if if i told you you are about to marry a murderer you would not believe it david for you just because people have not acted out they are lost does not mean they are free from it somebody who does not have god forbid me even if it's one billion and they call things they don't know anything about instead of them to say mercy oh god one billion i will not leave jesus for it and then you are not paid salary for three months and by yourself you start scrolling your phone you call x everything y everything said everything in, in search for who will give you money and you will not know when you find yourself lying with a medical condition sorry i just have this thing there's one pain i can't explain i need four hundred thousand for the pain who is treating you like that 
send me the money and at the end of it you say ah look anytime you feel you are standing you are already on your way going down the only reason why we stand i'm telling you is by the mercy of god and the earlier you accept this bar the better for you there are many arrogant people who have made noise like this to their detriment and today they have become a disaster to the nations vulnerabilities an obsession for fame there are people who love the Lord, oh, but this obsession for fame, they would do anything to promote themselves to be famous. It is your assignment to be honest with yourself. What are my vulnerabilities? Now that there's no money in many places, that's when you will know people's vulnerabilities. How do you know vulnerabilities when trouble comes? There are people who love God, but they can do anything doable. Let your imagination stretch as far as you think I'm saying. Once it will bring money, they are willing to do it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? For a child to arrange to kidnap their parents. Huh? You've heard of people arranging to kidnap their own loved ones. Then they join the people to cry. And after they are done crying, you've heard the story, is when they start sharing the money and the thing backfires, then eventually someone will say, no, I didn't take that risk for nothing. It is your responsibility under God. The moment you attain the state of greatness, I taught you, there are three groups of people who will always come to you. Remember our teaching yesterday, um, last week, wicked people, let's recap selfish people and ignorant people and you must be aware of these people it is for you to begin to pray lord help me in the name of jesus lord show me mercy many people today have been destroyed perpetually their bishopric has even been taken their relevance has gone hallelujah when i was writing this writing out all of these things there was one, one weakness that stood out and the Lord told me, talk about it. It's called offense. I want you to listen. Offense comes with growth and increase. Offense comes with growth and increase. That means the more you grow, the more you increase, the higher your chance of being offended. Hallelujah. With growth and increase comes the awareness of honor, comes the awareness of shame, comes the awareness of disappointment, comes the awareness of embarrassment. There are people who have no business feeling ashamed or pained except because they have risen to a point that is now notable. Acts chapter 24 and verse 16. Acts 24, 16. Give it to us. It says, And herein do I exercise myself. Is that in your Bible? To have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. It is possible for a man to be in this state. Void of offense towards God. Void of offense towards men. There are preachers today hating one another there are businessmen today hating one another. You trace the story, it goes to offense. Ego. Ego is such a, in fashion today, it has become an industry. An industry has literally been built around the ego of great men. Offense. Revelation chapter 2, 4 and 5. No, no, no. James 1, my apologies, 19 and 20. James 1, let's hurry up, 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, God is speaking to you now, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Is that in your Bible, verse 20? For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. He already told you. No matter how anointed you are, when you allow this cancer of offense to eat into your heart, you will be surprised 
are the many things that you will do as a result. There are offended preachers, offended businessmen, offended parents, offended spouses. And you see, the pain from offense can be so deep, you can feel it physically. You know how you feel um, like peptic ulcer or something? You literally feel as if they are piercing you with a knife. There are people who cannot sleep. Oh, he did this to me. She did this to me. Offense. This was the issue between Esau and Jacob. The offense was so strong. The brothers of Joseph, after they betrayed him, if Joseph was not free of this, do you know what he would have done? He would have probably gathered them one by one and slaughtered them one by one. Number one, for collecting my coat of many colors, putting me in a well, and selling me for 30 shekels, I will slaughter all of you one by one. When the brothers discovered that Joseph, that they wanted to kill, was now prime minister, they were afraid. And he said, set the table before them, let them eat. He said, you meant it for evil. Ah, what's that song? You take what the enemy meant for evil and, and turn it for good. Turning for good. Sing it one more time. You take what the enemy You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Hallelujah. If you don't repent from that they will see mentality. They will see. It's unnecessary. Your destiny is too expensive to peg yourself with that kind of mundane pursuit. Are we together? Offense. You need to find your weakness and your vulnerability and obtain grace to deal with it. There are preachers when they get angry, they can box physically. I'm not talking of report you to police by themselves. They will box you and beat you. What happened? You called him Joshua Selman instead of Apostle Joshua Selman. That's what warranted that, that, that boxing. Hallelujah. There are men, if, they are, if their wife say, honey, you say you are stupid. Honey, better call me by my name. Call me daddy. It's not for me to dictate what you should do in your home, but it's unfortunate. Easy things that bring offense. Can I tell you the truth? If you know God, you will not keep men in your heart. If you know God, bah, you will not keep men in your heart. Now, don't think to be free from offense is just something you just laugh like that. There are people who have been wounded and that wound is so deep, it will not jump out overnight. But this is where the Holy Spirit comes. He brings to your life that balm in Gilead. And with that balm, healing comes. With that balm, healing comes. Is someone learning? Can I tell you? When I see young men in ministry talking about fathers and talking about other people and shouting and carrying a false sense of holiness, Sometimes I just lay my hand on my chest and I pray a sincere prayer for them. I say, oh God, please help these people. You've never held one million, never held ten naira, and you are shouting, making stupid noise. And there are people, they have not, there are certain circles if God brings you into, you have to go back and go and pray a prayer of repentance in case most people have no idea what honor can do. Most people have no idea what liftings can do. I told you last week, that is the reason why you see the older people get, the less noisier they become. They just keep quiet. Ah, this, thing, this man did this. I will kill him all. And the elderly man just says, hmm. instead of you to discern what he's saying, you are there shouting as a young man. Hallelujah. Discern your vulnerabilities.
discern your weaknesses there are people who cannot see women there are people who cannot see men there are people who cannot see pleasure once they see a nice car something in them starts shaking who is the owner of this car i must know the person huh nice house there are people who are almost getting arrested right now because they can go and lie down on somebody's car just because they want to claim it it's not just your desire to have it sometimes it is lost are we together most times offense comes when expectations are disappointed sometimes offense comes when your lost is not actualized please listen to me koinonia you are hearing this preacher talk to you because i want you to last i do not want anybody to receive that statement ichabod in their lives you must obtain grace find out what your vulnerabilities are pray flog it and create systems by grace to protect yourself there are others your weakness is food it sounds funny food gluttony ah, except you don't see food you will misbehave no matter what you are wearing once food comes around you lose your, di your, your uh, uh, dignity, lose your decorum, and you will fight. You are sweating, trying to make sure you get one and get another one. Oh, the remaining the juice. And you, you, you become disoriented in the presence of food. You can collect food from children and you are laughing while you are eating their food. It's lost. Gluttony. Are we learning lay your hands on your head don't pray yet just lay your hands on your head I want you to think in one minute what is that one thing if you were Satan what will you use to bring you down start praying over it now what is that one thing please pray sincerely if you were Satan what is that one thing you would use to bring you down be very honest and talk to the Lord lay your hands on your head and cry thou son of David have mercy upon me have mercy upon me have mercy upon me I was broke the other day you may say I found myself trying to arrange a preacher to come and preach and manipulate members and raise money for me because I need to pay my rent this issue of finances Lord help me before it tears me into pieces Go ahead and pray. Nothing to be ashamed of. This is church. For some of you, your weakness is lying. Once you open your mouth, 80% of what you are saying is not the truth. Even if you swear by the name of the Lord, you are still lying. Pray and say, Lord, help me. I've changed myself and my destiny. Lying on stage as a preacher in the name of Jesus. Exaggerating things and telling lies. For some is pride, full of ourselves. Please go ahead and pray. Don't feel condemned, but pray. There are people today because of money and titles. They are 50 years, but they have said they are 35 years because they must get it by force. People have forged documents today, forged all kinds of, including Christians simply because they are looking for opportunities oh ladies and gentlemen lift your voice and pray ask god to show mercy was that your rest on me song again find a comfortable key and sing that rest on me song again please pray for one minute
listen to me. Hear me. The thing with weakness, even if it is one more year left for you on earth, you can rubbish everything good you have done simply because you did not address this. Seeing that we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance. Give yourself an assignment. If you need to take a day off to cry before God, go and cry before God. You can't lie to God. Roll on the ground and say, your majesty, this is me coming before you. I want to last. Help me. Hallelujah. Can I give you the last one? Ichabod. Obtaining grace to last. What is the sixth and final reason why many, many people have their greatness short-lived? Are you ready? Loss of passion and fire for God. Loss of passion and fire for God. This is the final and the greatest reason why people have their greatness short-lived. It may not necessarily be anything wrong as far as whatever their engagement is concerned. The problem can be that it is the secret place that is wrong. Ministry is still right. Everything is happening right. Business is still right. Everything is happening right. But you have stopped getting the result. You are preaching with the fire you preached yesterday. But the impact is no longer the same. You are singing the songs you used to sing yesterday. But the impact is no longer the same. You still have the finances you had yesterday. But the impact is not the same. Here is the problem. Loss of passion and fire for God. 2 Chronicles 26.5 Uzziah and he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. Ladies and gentlemen, my Bible says, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord. Can I tell you? And I mean this from the depth of my heart. And I don't say it from a standpoint of pride. I can close this Bible for one year and still not lack what to preach. I can rise up from here now. I can jump into a plane and preach in a conference back to back for the next two weeks and I'll not lack what to say. It is not always about what you are saying. It's about who you are loving. Sometimes what you are saying may not change, but because there is a disconnect between your love life and that of Jesus, what you are saying may be right, but the impact is no longer right. Is someone learning? There are many pastors that stop working with God and they are only working for God. Working for God. Revelation chapter 2, 4 and 5. Loss of passion and fire. Nevertheless, speaking about the church in Ephesus, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. What is his recommendation? Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly. Watch this. And will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? The secret of any man who has remained in this work this business of thy kingdom come beyond everything they do beyond the skill the talent is their love for Jesus their genuine passionate love for Jesus I had a busy schedule all through last week and when I returned thank God for many of you and I appreciate your love and concern you know sending text messages and say apostle how do you rest you know this and that and that and as much as I appreciate it, I have made a covenant with God and with my life. I am motivated by my love for Jesus. I don't have to do the things I do. 
on Wednesday now I'm in Lagos with Pastor Nat, the Oasis Conference. Wednesday, Thursday. From there, I head to Asaba. Friday, Saturday again. Then I'm back on Sunday. Me for you. Love. Say love. There are things only love can make you do. There is a level of growth. It's no longer about money. It's no longer about fame. All those points have been proven. The only thing that motivates you to continue when every point and every statement has been made is your love. I'd rather die loving him than to live without him. It is true. Hallelujah. You want to know the secret behind the jealousy of God upon the lives of many great people? Find out their love for Jesus. Translated in their service. Translated in their giving. Translated in their living for him. Love for Jesus. I will spend my life and be spent for him because I truly love him. I'm not just serving him. No. If he gives me an instruction today to close Koinonia and stop ministry, I will ask the media to do a video for me before the whole world. I will say, oh world, you know how much I've served God and how much I love you people. But right now, the one who was with me when you did not know me has given me an instruction. And that's the end of it. Do you love him that much? <laughs> the proof that you love him is what you can lay down for him. Love is not talk. I love you. I love you. Our world has disregarded that statement called love. When we say love now, it means many things to people to a point that it does not hold any value again. Can I tell you? The real proof of love is what you can lay down. Not what you can say. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down. Hallelujah. For some of us, we have given all. We laid down everything. Everything for him. Everything. And anything he ever gives us, he only gave us as stewards. It belongs to him. It truly belongs to him. The stage belongs to him. The mic belongs to him. The people belong to him. The wisdom belongs to him. The power belongs to him. The influence belongs to him. Koinonia Global belongs to him. May nobody in this ministry, beginning from me, ever take the place of God. Say amen. May nobody ever get to a point where we push God out and say, I am the one. No, may it not happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, listen to this. Every great person who desires to last in today's world must have these three things. We're wrapping up. I just thought to add this. In my preparing this note, it, it came strongly to my spirit to just bring this as my concluding words. Every great person who desires to last in today's world must have the following. Number one, prophetic intercessors who hold you up in prayer. If you want to last in this end time, especially in light of the evil that is in our world, you must have prophetic intercessors who lift you up before God. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Let's hurry up. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us. We are anointed people. We are apostles. But pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it's with you. Verse 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Why? For all men have not faith. Pray for us. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 says, Be sober, it says. Be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a project in the kingdom of darkness that is only for great men. Did you hear what I said? There is a project in the kingdom of darkness for all men. 
but there is a project in the kingdom of darkness. Once you are not great, you have not attained a level of greatness in destiny or in the spirit. Those spirits have no business looking for you. It's like a monitor system in the spirit. The moment you hit a certain threshold of greatness and kingdom influence, certain weapons are fashioned against you. At that point, it is not enough to know how to pray for yourself. You must have an army of people. And can I tell you, any great man you love, great preacher, great businessman, the greatest way to show them love is not just giving money. The greatest way to show them love is to lift them before God. When people tell me they are praying for me, I know some are just talking. But when I, I know and discern that some mean what they are saying, I appreciate it beyond anything. You must have an army of prophetic intercessors who uphold you in prayer. Number two, you want to survive these last days and to be able to have longevity of impact, you must have a system of accountability. Write it down, please. A system of accountability for correction, for advice, for counsel, for guidance and to speak over you prophetically you want to last you must have a system of accountability for correction for advice for counsel for guidance and to speak over you prophetically let me give you an advice never submit to a man you cannot listen to never submit to a man never submit to persons never submit to any group or any system that you are not committed to listening to no that you cannot take correction you cannot take counsel you cannot humble yourself to receive prophetic words over that is not submission there are many things people call submission in the body of Christ today it is clear that the graces have not flown to them the graces have not flowed to them do you know why because their hearts are not truly connected it's just a ritual you must have a system of accountability for correction for advice for counsel for guidance for prophetic speakings over your life this is a formula it has never changed it will not change when you see people who rise and last it is because there is a system within their life this is very powerful can I tell you the truth the dynamics for excelling in life are it the, 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 the dynamics the variables are so many you will need assistance at many points in your life when you start you usually will start with a lot of overconfidence I know what to do I mean I, after all people have recognized me no you will need help you will need help you will need help number three to last in addition to prophetic intercessors a system of accountability number three you must have the gift of godly and faithful friends I want you to listen you will never truly be able to survive these are prophetic survival strategies the gift of godly underline godly and underline faithful two words you should never throw away the gift of godly and faithful friends proverbs 18 24 a man that had friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother can i tell you please look up Many of you have been so wounded, betrayed, injured by friendship. Once you hear the word friend, you don't even want to listen to you. You are full, especially if you are a great man. It's impossible to have become great without the scars of relationships and the rest. But don't allow the devil deceive you. Not everyone is a deceiver. There are godly and there are faithful people. Say amen. amen. There, your assignment is to ask God to help you find them 
If you find them using your mind, you will keep making mistakes. Only God can bring good people to your life. Are we together? Faithful and godly people. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Many great people are very lonely. It is very lonely at the top. Is the reason why with all due respect, you see many great people doing crazy things. They are on drugs. They take drugs. They take all kinds of things because of sheer loneliness. They are at a point where everybody is celebrating them. They have all the money. They have all the fame. They have everything, but they don't trust anybody. They don't trust anybody. And so you see that their best friend is their cat. Or their best friend is, is their rabbit. Or whatever it is, whatever. They keep it there and they can even will their inheritance to the rabbit. Because in their mind, is more trusted. If you do not have, <coughs> excuse me. If you do not have good people in your life, believe me, you are in trouble. Don't just celebrate money in your account. You must pray and say, God, in my lifetime, give me the opportunity of tasting of a godly the gift of a godly and a faithful friend. Ecclesiastes 4. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. 10. For if they fall, watch this, one will lift up his fellow. That is the, the purpose of godly people to help you. These are people you can cry to. You know, I've always, I've always given you this charge. Is there someone in your life today who can pay any price to see that you love? Is there someone in your life today that if you call the person and say, listen, I'm about to be taken to the police station, the person will say, where are you? I'm coming with you. Not anyway, keep me posted. Um, if they do arrest you, I will find out. If I call you and it's not, you don't pick, I know you are in prison. I will be praying. Can I tell you, you have met people who broke your heart, but don't conclude on that. There are people who will stand with you. There are people who will cry with you. Some of you have already been fortunate to find those people. Can I advise you? Swallow your pride and keep them. Don't ever open your mouth and say, I don't need you. Then you say, sorry, later on. Swallow your pride and keep them. Because when you find godly and faithful friends, they are like gold. Don't throw it away. You may not find it again in your lifetime. Believe me. Believe me. Great people are lonely at the top because they do not have anybody to talk to. They are afraid of talking to everybody because they are billionaires. They don't know who. And you see, because we are beings of expression, we are beings of emotion. One of the ways they punish prisoners some of the world's, you know, most notorious prisoners is to take them to a place where they incarcerate them and they have no, they are not in touch with anybody. Imagine being in a place, you don't know whether it's morning, you don't know whether it's night, you don't see trees, you don't see plants, you don't see seas, you don't see nobody, you are left alone. And those bold people who can kill people, they begin to cry after days and weeks like children. Because nobody was designed to stay in isolation. Some of you today are giving up quality relationships because you are looking for money. Quality relationships. God brought the gift of faithful people to your life. But you are throwing them away because the only person you are looking for is the person who can solve your problem. You will rise to the top and find out that it's a lonely place full of deceivers. The top is full of interest. Everybody there is looking for something or trying to protect something. There are few people in your life who will love you as you are. They will see your nonsense and still love you the way you are. When you find such people, hear this advice coming from someone who loves you. Protect them. Swallow your pride and protect them at all costs. There are people today who can carry their salary and give you and say, if this will bring joy to your face, I will do it. There are people today who will sit down and cry with you. As a preacher, there are people today who want to know how is the man doing, not the man of God. How is the man doing? 
I know the man of God is doing well, but how is the man doing? Our world is full of people who just want to take. Most people, when they come to great men, they take. In Hausa, we say, Ale baku musamu. Have you heard those kind of things? Aha. Uh -huh. They come to you wanting to pray on everything they can find. May God give you so that we'll get from it too. So most great people are already wounded. They suspect everybody. The moment you come and say, good afternoon, sir. What are you looking for? It is strange to them to care for them. To the point that they are not even interested. Why are you here? Uh, that's my rent again. Oh, yeah, take, go. I, I knew that's why you came. Why else are you here? Oh, demons have been oppressing me. Okay, Father, let the demons go away. With all due respect to him of blessed memory, the man called A. A. Allen, I will not say much because I'm speaking on air. The latter part of his life, there were certain things that were not the best expression of finishing strong. And that happened in his life, credited to loneliness. Great people can be lonely. It is, it is very lonely at the top, I tell you. Is the reason why you find out that great men can become so silly. Little children can become their best friends. They throw away people. They can leave somebody to be waiting for hours wanting to see the CEO. And the man is playing with his grandson and laughing. And you are wondering, what is this grandson doing to this man? It is because there, there was always a child in him. He caged that child to become a champion. And now that he's a champion, that child is still crying for expression. Unfortunately, everybody there is looking for a great man. There's nobody to relate with the child. So when he finds a child like him, he can now sit on the ground and now play. You watch some of these guys in the Middle East. Watch how most of them spend their money. They climb camels and they run around and return back with dust in their body. These are millionaires and billionaires. And you are saying, this is all you do with your money? To play around with camels and animals? No. There was something they gave up to be great. And now when they became great, since they could not find solace in men, they resort to animals. Among the many things that becomes a blessing to you, ladies and gentlemen, is the gift of good people. There are people today who would not have died if they had good people in their life. Someone to pray with you. Someone to cry with you. The person can say, I don't have all the money. But this one tuba of yam I have, let's eat it together and give God thanks. I am telling you again, you may not have too many of these people in your life, but if one ever comes around your life, look for a psychological treasure chest and put them inside and protect them. Throw away your pride and protect them. Are we learning? <laughs> Like I said yesterday, there are some of you who are too innocent to understand what I'm saying. You will make reference to this message by next year. When certain results would have manifested in your life, you will sit down in your office and be crying alone and clean your tears when your workers want to enter. Sir, just to tell you the mail has come. And at a point you want to say, go away. Let the money go away. Have you ever wondered why wealthy people hang themselves? Does it make sense? At least the person would have given you the money bar before dying. How does someone who have everything in his life made, one day you will see them write a letter and just hang themselves and die? What were they looking for that money could not give them? What were they looking for that fame could not give them? Even in the secular, there are celebrities today who are struggling with mental health and depression. They have everything life can offer. Their homes are littered with awards. Many of them get into drugs. They get into all kinds of unfathomable practices because of that cry for expression. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Koinonia, I'm praying for you. That if there is anyone here, you do not have a sincere person you can call a friend. I'm praying for you. I don't know how God will do it all. But I'm praying for one preacher. I'm praying for one mother. I'm praying for one businessman. I'm praying for someone who has been wounded from childhood till adulthood. May my God 
beginning from tonight, may my God bring good people to your life. For someone watching from America, you are watching from, from Europe, you are watching from across Africa, you are saying, Apostle, you just spoke about me. I need the gift of good people. May my God answer your prayer. And for some of you who based on carelessness, you threw away some of the best gifts God gave you. I'm praying, I'm praying for you again. Some of you threw away, God carried treasures and gave you. But you threw them away. Good friends, good people. Some of them it was even your parents. Some of them it was even your spouse. And today they are no more. And you are living in regret. Saying, if I knew how important this person was. They loved you whether you had money or not. They believed in you whether you were famous or not. These are people who can come and enter the prison and say, go out, I will stay. I am telling you again, if God ever brings such people to your life, please open your eyes, receive them with sincerity and let them know. I've taught you how to maintain relationships. If you cannot contribute value, contribute gratitude. If you cannot contribute value, contribute gratitude. Hallelujah. There are great people here listening to me. They know what I'm saying. When you are up there, it is a lonely path. You can be married and still be lonely. There are things with all due respect that even your spouse will not understand. It's a peculiar situation that is based on where God has kept you. You will need the gift of friends. Most of us have money. Money cannot talk. Money cannot say I love you. Money cannot say I'm praying for you. Money cannot say I will be there with you. Jesus said there is a friend that sticketh. I mean the Bible says there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And let me give this one counsel and then we pray. Never be the reason for somebody else's pain. That is not a ministry God gave anybody. Did you hear what I said? Never be the reason for anybody's pain. Do not be the reason for the downfall of any man of God. Do not be the reason for the crying of anybody. It is a wicked way to live. Don't be the reason why a family is in tears and pain. Don't be the reason why you join the heads of two friends and stand behind and laugh. No. We are called to be binders. We are called to be peacemakers. There are people who are in church. The problems in many churches ferment from gossip and the bad ministry of people. There are people when they show up anywhere, it is trouble. Did you hear what this one said? Did you hear what in this company? Ha! Ah, look, oh, I know that I'm the one who knows. Be careful because you are bringing a curse on yourself. There are people today who are the reason behind the trouble of spouses. Oh, have you had this? I had your husband said this. I had your wife said this. They join their heads and they stand and they're smiling. There are people today who are the reason behind the pain of good friends. There are people today who are the reasons why preachers cannot see eyeball to eyeball. They come here, they say, yes, sir. They get information here. They go there and say, yes, sir. They give information. You see, there is God is a God of justice and judgment. Oh, you, I hear that you want to help this lady. Please, oh, let me give you an advice. This lady, don't help this lady, oh. I know that her mother is a widow, but we heard that this lady used to be a bad girl before. But have you found out whether she has repented? And the man says, really? Ah, that's it. She comes by the next day and comes with the same friend gossiping about her. And the man says, go away. And the friend said, don't worry. All things work together. Ah, I pray for you. If there is anyone in your life who is causing you pain and then standing by you, may God take them out of your life. May my God take them out of your life. Take deceivers out of your life. Take wicked people out of your life. Ichabod. When the glory departs from men, it is because of this. Pride. When the glory departs from men, 
it is because of this an arrival mentality when the glory departs from men it is because of distractions and compromises not staying in your area of grace being a busybody everywhere and not protecting your focus and your call when the glory departs from men it is because they have violated their covenant their winning strategy with God what God gave them or the secrets that were behind the mysterious results complacency or anything in between made them to compromise on it number five when the glory departs from men it is because of their weaknesses and vulnerabilities they shrugged it away and carried a false sense of holiness and just felt I am alright just because you are not in trouble yet number six the greatest of all reasons when the glory departs from men it is because their passion and their fire for God even if you are a preacher you can write books on fire and not have fire you can hold conferences on fire and not have fire just because your message had fire yesterday does not mean it has fire now rise up on your feet king of my life you are my all and i live for you alone king of my life you have my all and i live my life for you my heart is yours my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life my heart is yours my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life hallelujah one prayer for yourself then I speak over you Lord the name Ichabod will never be used in my life go ahead and pray the name Ichabod the name Ichabod it will never be said he was once a great man of God but has been destroyed now it will never be said she was once a vibrant woman of fire someone pray it will never be said he was once a great man it will never be said koinonia was once a cutting edge ministry desired by nations someone pray this is the last spiritual vaccination you are receiving grace to last grace to last preacher pray grace to last in ministry in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray let me make the altar call now the greatest way to live a life of meaning and to last is your passion for Jesus you are in this place and whilst you heard me speak the Holy Ghost told you that you need to restore your relationship or you need to make it right with Jesus the first time now like I will always say you have a choice you can throw away this message and say I don't care we will respect you but I hope your destiny will be able to respect your indecision for Jesus but for as many who want to make it right right now I want to make this call one to five we're out of time I want you to run wherever you are and come and stand right in front of me or across the balcony here within this room don't be silent and don't wait until someone else comes I count one to five run to Jesus he's able to give you a new beginning
one. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. Come, three. You will never be the same. You've if you are coming, please hurry up so we finish. Your life has changed. You will never be the same. You touch His grace. Your life has changed. joining them please come quickly all the overflows you can move to your screens your projector stand and just remain there and for those who are online I want you to join you are making Jesus Lord of your life it doesn't matter how long things have been God is able to give you a new beginning now please may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head say this after me Lord Jesus you're joining them please come very quickly I see someone running say Lord Jesus tonight I desire you above anything else and above everything else. I declare that Jesus is Lord of my life, my Savior and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Blessed Father, thank you for these precious ones. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that based on the authority of Scripture and upon your confession, let the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave be broken over your life. I just saw the anointing coming on one person now. Huh? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, you are free every spirit that has held you down. I call it by name and I curse it by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you right now from every stumbling block, everything that ties you down and I launch you into a season of victory. You go forward ever and backward never. Amen and amen. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate them now. Please, all of you, just look to my right. You will see a group of counselors waiting to receive you. They will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seats. Let's honor them in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. It's been quite a stretch tonight. Please allow me a minute to make the following very important announcements and then we're done. To let you know that next week will be our final miracle service for 2023. So it's going to be an extraordinary time in this place. Not the final service, the final miracle service. Uh, we don't do miracle service in December because we're on break so that people can rest, have their retreats, have their time with family and friends. So our final miracle service to wrap up this year's series of miracle services will be um, next week, Sunday. Make sure you invite everyone within this town and all who are coming in from across other regions and other nations, you're most welcome. Hallelujah. And then the media department, the media and productions department is now open for new members. Um, all those who are interested and want to become part of our media and productions department, please send an application to media at koinoniaglobal.org. Um, they are particularly looking for competent people in the area of visual mixing video editing, good writing skills, videography, photography, graphic designs, projection, then broadcast and production. I'm told that it ends on Sunday, 26th November. So please um, take advantage of the time. And then all other departments that um, we announced earlier on, I don't know if their doors are closed, but you can go to the PR desk after the grace and find out, get more information. Hallelujah. Uh, remember to come with your prayer request next week and then also come with the requests of your loved ones. Hallelujah. Then 
by the privilege of God's grace, I want to listen, please. By the privilege of God's grace, we are going to be fasting on Saturday. Everybody as a global family, we are waiting upon the Lord just one day, and um, uh, there's no service, so as much as possible, at least children can fast till 12 or 1. Let them fast. They will not die. Children can fast till 12, and then adults stretch it to 6, or at least from four, you can break five. The prayer request will be projected Friday night slash Saturday morning. Just look to all our social media platforms. The prayer focus will be there. Let's pray and prepare our hearts to come and receive of God and make sure you invite everyone, the sick, those who are trusting God for miracles. We trust God for a mighty move of his spirit in the name of Jesus. Have you been blessed tonight? Thank you very much for your patience. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday. You are my own, and I live for you. And I live for you. 